Hello, good. It's good afternoon here, but wherever you are, it might be good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I wanted to come on live today because I haven't done a sit down video in so long. I've, I mean, I've not properly been like working for about a month. So it feels kind of strange when I was doing a sit down talking video to camera and then I thought let me just come on live because I've also not been on live in a very long time. Um, Vanessa can be if you haven't already. Know. Please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'm guessing most people here will be subscribers and I just hit uh, an amazing number, 90,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I was just going to talk about updates, you know, what I'm thinking for 2021 and yeah, my plans basically. So my plan for this channel specifically, I will also share my, um, my uh, link. So if I, if anyone wants to join this live, they can do so if they want to have a chat about anything. Um, yeah, so for this channel, there is certain videos that I've seen that people really enjoy to watch. So I'm definitely going to hone in on those sort of videos. And so I'm not wasting people's time. <laughs> they don't want to watch certain videos that I upload. Although I will still upload videos here and there. Um, hi Ziggy Zane, hi Bob YG. I will still upload videos that I enjoy that, you know, might not be like that popular, but I think that I like to enjoy them, uh, filming them and uploading them. So the things that I'm definitely going to hone in on are the real estate videos. So I'm going to start a new series all about um, real estate in Africa, going to the most incredible spaces, not just in Ghana, but around, really cannot wait to do that. Um, and then I'm also going to you know, really hone in on the Living in Ghana series, interviewing people that have moved from outside to Ghana. These things I'm kind of already doing, but I am definitely going to, you know, just like make sure that I stick to things that people want to see. So that Living in Ghana series. Um, and then I have one more series that I'd want to start, but I need to kind of get it in motion. Uh, and that's working more within the diaspora. And hopefully I'll be able to spend more time in Ghana this year. I'm just waiting for a few things to, you know, come through. And then I will be able to update you on those plans as well. Um, but obviously with travel being the same sort of restrictions, uh, you know, I can travel because, you know, if it's for work, for filming, uh, I will definitely be doing that. Um but I just need to plan, you know, when I'm next going and plan my trip, basically. Uh, but what I have been doing recently, obviously, I just went to Ghana in December with my family. It was our first ever family holiday and it was so exciting. Yes, I am on the road to 100k. I'm very, very excited about that. That is my next goal. It's like a big, big goal. I say it's my next goal. It's been my goal for ages, like for three years or something like that but finally I can see that the end is in sight I think in the next two months I should be able to I should be able to um upload what am I talking about I should be able to hit it uh, can you explain how you do a million videos in Ghana in one week I've tried to explain this before but basically what I do is I film as much as I can and there is literally no no way to do it easily. I So the last time that I did that filming loads of videos at once was in September and actually I got ill at the end of it because I was so exhausted. Like I'd literally worked myself into the ground. Definitely not advisable, um, but I just, it's so difficult um, for me because there's so many things I want to film and I can see so many, you know, opportunities and things that I'd love to bring to my channel. But obviously I'm, I'm working with such a short space of time. So I basically try and cram as much in as I can. And sometimes it's not, um, it's, it's not like the best idea. Uh, so yeah, so basically I just wake up really early 
Um, I work with a driver so that they're always there taking me from one place to another and I just keep going. And I also, if I see something on the way, then I will stop and film that as well. And um, so I maybe wake up at, it's not that early, like 7 a.m. and then leave the house at 8 and then just back to back film until about eight o'clock at night and then do, do it all over again the next day. Um, and then just taking every opportunity that you can see, actually. Um, thanks so much, Maximilian. Really appreciate that, 4 99 Honestly, like every little, you know, help supports me in getting my new gear and everything. I actually just bought a new camera, got a new microphone. It's not actually plugged in for this live, but I just bought a new camera and um, so thanks so much, really appreciate it. Uh, would you be doing videos about other African countries other than Ghana? So yeah, this is definitely something that I want to do more of. The issue, I guess for Ghana, for me is, it would be interesting to know actually, for everyone that's on this live, do you enjoy seeing the Ghana videos or would you prefer to see other countries within Africa as well on my channel? Uh, for me, obviously, because my dad's from Ghana, because I've been going there ever since I'm, I was young, I have quite a lot of connections there and also obviously my family's there. So it's quite easy for me to travel there and film and stuff like that. And I know other people there, whereas other countries, I don't necessarily know that many people there. I went to Nigeria, met up with some friends, did a little bit of filming there, but Nigeria is probably on my list of places to go next to do more filming. And then I'd also like to target the countries surrounding Ghana. So Ivory Coast, Togo, Sao Tome, which is obviously like an island just close to Ghana. Um, let's see. Hey Vanessa, when will you do more Love Attraction videos? I uh, love your channel, by the way. Thank you so much. And it's funny you say that because I spent pretty much this whole morning looking up my life, num life number. Oh, I can't remember what it is, but I found it so interesting and I love that sort of thing. And I actually even considered, should I make a whole other channel about that? Because I know that on this channel, because I have focused a lot on Ghana, putting other content in there, I, I don't know if you know it would be appreciated by people but I will definitely work on another one of those videos because there's some huge things about to happen next week and um, that definitely attracted that I'm really excited about. When am I coming to the States? I was meant to come to the States this year. I was meant to, I was going to go and visit Texas and LA but obviously the situation you know that we, sorry not this year, last year, the situation that we all know happened um, and it's not possible for somebody to fly straight from the UK, or it wasn't last year, from the UK, the States. So it wasn't possible, but probably in the next couple of years when it is possible. Um, big yes to Ghana, but obviously other countries as well as you can. I'm hoping when I can spend more time in Ghana, I can definitely travel to the surrounding countries easily. Uh, the thing for me is obviously I've got kids, so I can't leave them for too long. I've never been to South Africa, but um, I've got friends. Actually, I know some people in South Africa, so that's probably somewhere that I could quite easily travel to and know other people. Uh, Uh, can you, I would love videos on Sao Tome. I'm really excited to go there. I'm hoping that potentially I can go there on a family trip because it looks like a beautiful place. I think my kids would love it as well. Rwanda is somewhere I really also want to travel to uh, and Uganda. Um, Vanessa, we planned on meeting when you come to Ghana. I just want to know, have you been to Ghana recently? Yeah, so I was just in Ghana on, it wasn't a, a work trip. It was definitely a family holiday. So that actually, that is a whole other thing. I, because obviously I create, I changed my channel to be all about Ghana, not last year, 2019, August of 2019. I've been, how many times since then? One, two, three. I think four times since I decided to make my, four or five times since I decided to make my channel all about Ghana, but 
ever since I made that decision, every time I went after that was like purely to film. And so this time when I went in um, December there, that was the first time I'd been in so long. That was just a holiday and it was amazing. Obviously I did do some filming, but I wasn't filming how I filmed to make about a million videos in a week. Uh, I was just filming, you know, as and when I could. I was just literally filming rather than really concentrating on it. Uh, and so to go and just be able to relax, it allowed me to feel that feeling of just like loving the country so much. And, you know, just being able to like soak in the sun, something I've not also been able to do because I'm normally running about. Um, African-Americans typically have a little bit of DNA of all the West African, all the West Coast of Africa. Uh, appreciate a mix. Okay, I'll definitely take that on board. Um, thank you. Maximilian again, thank you so much. Uh, visit Atlanta drinks on me, thank you. I have actually been through Atlanta before that just stopped. We didn't actually get out of the airport. That was the last time we went to Texas and Tennessee. We stopped through Atlanta on the way. I've got family in Atlanta as well. So ATL, I'll get there one day. <laughs> you should, okay, where are we now? Thanks very much. I decided to put makeup on for probably like the second time this year. <laughs> I, I normally don't wear makeup when I'm just at home. Um, it would be great to have a meetup with subscribers when it's safer to do so. This is something that I wanted to do last year, again in September, but obviously because of the situation, it wasn't a good idea. But I definitely have a location that we can do it in ne next time when it's advisable. I can definitely set that up. That's something that I do want to do as soon as possible. Um, oh, that's so nice. I'm heading to Ghana on January the 15th, thanks to you. That's really great. Your Ghana contents are 95% greater Accra. Do the regions before jumping to other countries, just a thought, thanks. So yeah, as as I'm sure you know, you know, I live in Scotland, so when I go, I'm trying to do as much as possible. So if I travel, like I actually did in December when I went with my family, we went to Abri, Kokrobite and Accra. I know Kokrobite is in Accra, but you know what I mean. Um, but if I start traveling further out, obviously that takes like days. You know, it'll take, I really want to go to the north that will take time to get there, time to get back. But recently I saw some of my friends went to um, Kumasi in a day, like went and came back. So I, I probably can work it out, schedule my time better to be able to go to different regions. Um, how do you find traveling with little children? We have always traveled with our children and they're older now, nine, 11, 14. So it's easier, but we haven't traveled traveled internationally yet so from the age of what were I took my son first to America when he was two and my daughter when she was also two went to America but we've also done a lot of travel to Europe before now before I took them to Ghana so we've done travel to Europe and then we did travel to America which was further than it was to get to Ghana and for me, it's totally fine. I have no issues with traveling with my kids. I actually love um, taking my kids on holiday, but I do get quite stressed in advance and during the actual traveling process. But it was totally fine. And they, I felt that my kids were so relaxed when we were in Ghana. You know, there was less sort of like bickering between the two of them, which can happen here sometimes. Um, but there was obviously things to take into consideration, like mosquitoes, the heat, all these things I had to really think about and is like consuming my brain, which makes me, it made it quite difficult for me to try and film, which I wasn't really trying to do anyway, try and film and concentrate on them. Um, 
Boston should be part of your list when you are here in the States. My family would be honoured to host you and your family. Keep doing what you do. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. I've never been to Boston, but I have been to New York. I've been to quite um, a few places in America, like all around. Uh, Sierra Leone, I've seen is absolutely beautiful. I just saw that ES was there. If you guys follow her, uh, her page, you will see that as well. Yes, 90,000 subscribers. I'm honestly so grateful. You have no idea how grateful I am. Hey, Vanessa, uh, how is COVID going in Scotland? So I'm not really one to be like watching the news, but we don't do anything. All I know is that the schools are closed. So I'm now homeschooling my kids once again, which initially when I heard that, I just thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to get any work done? But I'm trying to figure it out like now, for example, today I've been working like thanks to my um, my parents for watching the kids. I'm getting to do some work. Obviously my husband's working. He actually goes to work. So it's kind of difficult to juggle it all. Um, would I do another video with my sister, like an update on how she's finding things? I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to do an update with me. <laughs> she's not really um, one for social media at all. So for her to come on my channel, as I said in that video, was an absolute struggle to even get her on the first time. So I highly, highly doubt she would come on a second time. But I will ask her. She's very busy, so I'll I'll ask her. Uh, if I get my COVID test Tuesday, will I be okay for January the 9th, the 15th? So you have to get the COVID to go to Ghana, you have to get the COVID test up to 72 hours in advance. So the test actually has to be taken, the latest it can be taken is 72 hours before you get on the plane. Uh, so that should sort your situation out. Um, more tips for we small YouTubers. The best and only tip, it's not the only tip, the best tip that I can give you is to be consistent that is the main and most important thing upload as much as you can consistently so I'm now uploading three times a week and I pretty much have been since last year obviously I took a couple of weeks off when I went to Ghana and I also do actually think that it's good to take a couple of weeks off working or like uploading because just to like have a break but it's quite difficult to get back into the swing of things which is why I'm now on live um to just try and get me you know get me back into it <laughs> congratulations on your 90k did you expect your channel to grow this way with the exceptional work you have put in so yeah I mean it's been my goal to 100k for as I said three years I started my channel I think it was four years ago now 17 18 19. yeah I started my channel in 2017 so I started it, it was not yet quite four years, but four years ago. So it's not exactly been an overnight, <laughs> overnight situation. You know, it's taken time and a lot of effort to get to this point. So I'm really, really grateful for everyone that watches my channel today. And because obviously four years ago, I was basically talking to myself. Um... Hey, Franklin, nice to see you in the um, in the room. With YouTube, you have to keep feeding the beast. I know it sometimes feels like somebody described it as a toddler, <laughs> like you have to just keep keep getting on them. Um, I don't know, actually, I can't remember what the what the expression was. OK, I'm going to share the thing again if anybody wants to. Upload, upload. Oh, I'm honestly, I'm not even thinking straight. If anyone wants to join, join this chat, then please do click on that, and you can join and have a chat about anything. Has anybody started using Clubhouse? 
the new social media app I'm on there if you want to follow me although it took me a while to figure out how the thing actually works but now I figured it out I've spent this morning I watched a whole I say watched it's all audio I listened to a whole chat uh, I show both oh thanks so much by the way like third time you're giving me a, a sponsored chat thing i really really appreciate that thank you so much oh sorry somebody's coming in i think yeah hi yeah how are you oh gone oh well that was short and sweet <laughs> there is the uh the chat if anybody wants to join let me see this what's your something on land slash property prices do you know ghana recently got blacklisted by brokerages due to spend money laundering i mean i honestly don't know anything about that but what i do know is that property prices are are high in ghana i can it's really really not cheap yes you can find cheap properties in rural areas or in some places but generally in Accra especially it's so expensive because I've I've looked basically and I um that would be cool to go to every region and do a video on every one of the regions in Ghana that is definitely on my list, but I have to be there for longer. Um, I'm not in Ghana right now. I am in Edinburgh in Scotland. Okay, so I guess if anyone wants to join, then please feel free to join. So I recently um, obviously went with my family and I was going to talk a little bit about that, about that experience of actually like taking my family, first of all, it was so expensive and I think there's things that has, have to kind of change like the visa process I've done this before obviously I've done the visa process many times and um, and so this time I was doing it for my two kids and my husband you know you send your the passports away to the visa office and then they come back but I was so worried that it wasn't going to come back in time and it was so close to the day we were leaving they literally arrived two days before we're leaving so if you're applying for a visa please leave plenty of time because I had to start rearranging our trip because um I didn't want to lose out on the money from the accommodation if I cancelled it too late um sorry somebody said I should pin the link I don't really know how to do that Hmm, not sure, sorry. Um, yeah, so basically, if you are good, basically, if you're applying for a visa to go to Ghana, you should apply well in advance. I really would love to see visa on arrival for all for everyone in Ghana. I don't know why I'm talking as if I'm talking to somebody that works in like Ghana High Commission, but that would just make things so much easier. Because when you have to apply for a visa in advance, it's just a bit long. Um, so that's one expense. I'm talking about basically how expensive it was. So the first expense was the visas. The se second expense was the COVID tests. Obviously, some people might say, oh, should, should, I should have just waited until after like the situation. But in my opinion, I'm like, when's it going to end? And we were meant to go last summer. And that was not a possibility because the borders were closed in Ghana. Um, and then I was like, you know, if not now, then when? That's one of my one of my phrases. If not now, then when? Because how do we know what's going to happen, you know, in a couple of months? Like, I really just wanted my kids to experience Ghana and for us to have a really nice, relaxing Christmas period holiday. And um, so there was the the visas, the COVID tests for me, my husband and my son, because if you're under five, you don't have to get one. So there was a COVID test before we went, there was a COVID test when we arrived at the airport, and then obviously the flights. So it's really no mean feat traveling with a family of four to, you know, to anywhere, but especially to Ghana where there's all these expenses going on. 
Um, yes, I am, but my family aren't yet. Let me just see. Yeah, that is the next the next step for us. We are gonna gonna work on that process. Okay, let me add some people. Hi. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you? Doing good. How are you today? <laughs> yeah, I'm amazing, thanks. Yeah, I just figured, you know, let me hop in and chat <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm intrigued by your your title and your name. So have you got a channel yourself? Oh yes, yes. Um my husband is blind. I'm his wife. <laughs> we talk about our life and all of those good things. And we actually have plans to travel to Ghana because we're in the States right now. And so you're one of the channels that, you know, we've been following and getting information from and just, you know, and I saw I saw your video from where you went to um, Ghana with your family for Christmas and with the children. And, you know, one of the things that you just said that I wanted to talk about is something that nobody talks about, which is the expense. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, you know, we, we just got our passports. Like we didn't even realize at first, like, where do we want to travel? Where do we need, um, what do we need to travel? So we just got our passports. And like you're saying, the passports are one expense. The visas are another expense. And so, you know, I know our passports for the five of us, the three children, my husband and me, it was about 900 US dollars. And then, right. <laughs> and that was just, we factored in all the costs of getting copies of things and whatnot. But just to travel, the airline tickets and the story that you just told about getting your, uh, rearranging your travel because the visas weren't back in time, you know, with the passports. We've heard those stories. We know it's scary. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, before we'd even touched the ground, the especially the COVID tests, because it's 150 pounds here and then it's $150 when you arrive so for one person that's basically like $300 just for the COVID test for one person so it's yes. like when you start adding up the different people you know it's already like a thousand dollars on COVID tests alone and um, so it's it really is expensive that's why I think when you do decide to go then you definitely make it like long enough for it to be worth it right right and you know so that's where we looked at like we figured we needed to stay about a month. Yeah. Because you know? otherwise it's cost prohibitive. It just doesn't work, especially with the COVID test, because we found out on our end in the States, it's $130 per person, which means for the five of us, that's $690. And then if we're going to Ghana and it's, a, I know it's crazy, $150 a person, then it's, um, 750. So that's 750 dollars plus another, just say 700. Outside of you know travel, like airline, and you know how you always have other expenses when you travel. All the little things, even <laughs> the other type of expense is the malaria tablets. I don't know whether you'll be taking them or not. Different people have different opinions, right? <laughs> um, but they are also expensive. Like for one, for one, for me alone for two weeks it was a hundred pounds just for the the malaria tablets wow you know so that's where we were finding out that malaria is manageable like you can just take neem and so when we found out about the neem we said well we can start taking that now in the states you can get neem oil you can get it, it grows in warmer climates and everything and then also we know people who have contracted malaria and they just went to the side of the road in Ghana got some neem and boiled it with a pineapple and three days later they were fine so I yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely people get malaria all the time and as long as you realize it you know as soon as you can then you know you can get treatment is when people like leave it and don't realize they've got it that's when you can come into problems 
Right. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, my husband had to stop taking the tablets because they were, like messing with his head. You know, he was yeah. having like, mad dreams. Um, so, yeah. And you know, so that's another reason I've heard of the side effects of the malaria pills, which made me wonder, well, if I know that the neem works and I have an alternative to malaria pills, then I'm not taking a pill that costs this much and it has the same side effects. Like, I don't know how it works in Scotland, but I know in the States, we there are a lot of commercials for medications and they go on and on about all the side effects. Like, you know, your head could fall off, your arm could disappear. And <laughs> it's not, I'm just exaggerating, but you know, there are like serious things and then there's almost always death in that list. And so, you know, I just figured, well, for that cost, you know, um, for our plan for 2021, our plan is to be in Ghana. And I really wanted to be there for my birthday, which is this month. But because of our work schedule and in the States, it's like, great, I, we still are here, you know, and we still have to kind of schedule it and move around. But that's one of our goals for 2021. And I just hope some of the challenges that they're placing, putting in place don't become challenges for us to travel. And I hope the free trade, um, the free trade across the continent of Africa really benefits, you know, all of us that want to travel and uh, live and work on the continent of Africa. Amazing. Sure. I'm definitely going to subscribe to your channel. Oh, and thank you so much for coming on. I hope you have a great time when you go as well. Yes, thank you for having me. And I will continue to watch and hang out and watch this live stream as well. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Hi, Maximilian. Thank you so much for all your work. Hey, every, you gonna see people on your timeline saying you finally got an interview with Maximilian. <laughs> like, so I do it. Go back to Africa. You know, I support all my American people. I say, you know, Vanessa's my friend, man. You know, she's from Scotland. Oh. I'm, I normally support her. When I gave you like forty dollars, I normally get him two hundred. Uh, Dinah's to tell you, I'm the guy. Everybody's gonna be on say Maximilian's on your page. You are gonna get paid. I like the, the things that you're doing, though, sister. You're a beautiful sister. I want you to come to Atlanta, though. You went out there with Wood Mayo. Let, let me take you to Atlanta and show you about the States, too, though. You know, because, you know. Yeah, th thanks so much. I am um, one of my friends actually wants to move to Atlanta from the UK because she says it's meant to be, like, really family-friendly and stuff. And apparently there's loads of things for kids to do there. Is that right? You know, the only thing I'll tell you about Atlanta is it's the black Mecca of America. This is the only place I know in America as an African-American. We have a black mayor, we have a black police chief. Everything in Atlanta is black. Even Ooh. everything in Atlanta is black. We have control of this city. You know. Oh right, I actually didn't know that. So that's really good to know, to be honest. You know, whenever you hear, you ever notice when you tra travel the country, the world, the most pro progressive people you ever meet from America are from Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't meet that many Americans when I'm. In, I mean, especially in the UK, I don't really come across that many Americans. You should, you should definitely come to Atlanta because Atlanta is like the, the thoroughfare to go anywhere else. If you know, if you're okay. the, Atlanta has the best of the best. I'm not saying other cities that have great people. But <laughs> I think when you graduate from college, if you're you know African American and you're pro black, you move to Atlanta. Oh, one of my dad's brothers moved to Atlanta from Ghana, actually. And um, Still agree with you. You know, you know, we're we're an international city. You yeah. Know, you know, it's, nobody's from Atlanta. You might meet one or two people are actually from this city. Oh, you, right. So people have uh, moved into Atlanta, basically. Yeah, definitely visit. Oh. Get here. Just I'm gonna send you my number. Look for Max and me. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Send yeah. it to my email address and then I'll have it for when okay. I get to Atlanta, hopefully one day soon. So, so when you see people in your timeline say, I didn't hit on her, though, guys. I did. I just, I said she was cute, but I did not hit on her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's an inside joke. You have to go to the rest of the day. Oh, I yeah, I know. I've not scrolled down yet, actually. I need to start scrolling, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you go to <laughs> Dinosaur's page, and, uh, 
go black and black. So they'll say, you know, I, I help them all. I believe in what you all are doing. So if, if I give you a hundred dollars a week, I give him a hundred dollars a week. My business does well. To oh, me, thanks so much. You can go buy a bottle of champagne for a thousand dollars at a nightclub. Right? Yeah, no, that is true. Actually, people yeah. would do that. And I do it all the time. So why not thousand dollars to your own people? That I mean, that is so kind. I do definitely right. think. Um, I don't think spending that much money on alcohol is really, you know, a great idea. But you know, each to their own. Well, it's all relevant. You know, I, you know, I used to buy a, a burger for a dollar. That was when I was twenty years ago. You know, you work. You know, you know, you get successful. You do more things. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, it's all that's relevant. fair. It's all relevant. But you so know, have, have you been? I, have you been to Ghana or the Gambia or any of? I, I have been to uh, Rwanda and oh, I'm up Africa. And what's your thoughts? What was your thoughts on them? Uh, I went to Rwanda. You went to Rwanda? Yeah, what was your thoughts on, on Rwanda? Well, I might have to go back, so I need to probably hold my thought. Well, I feel like Rwanda still got a little tension going right now. You know, it, this wasn't that long ago. They just went to a genocide. But I think it's working through it. You know, yeah. You know, so like America went through a civil war, you mm -hmm. know, it was a little bit more recent, but I think they're making, you know, great moves to, you know, to move past. And I think that getting other people there is going to help things. But, you know, my personal opinion is it's a great place to live. I just think that there's an underbelly to the city and I really don't get it. You know, mm -hmm. it, there's, there's some, you know, if you kill half of somebody's family, yeah get over that in, in a couple of days brother no yeah no that's true i have heard yeah. that to be honest yeah. but i think it's a safe place not mm -hmm. a secure place yeah there's some tensions there but you know but at least they're dealing with it now so yeah. yeah you know it's, there's tensions in america we just had our capital overran but you know so we can look at you know, things a lot of ways we have you know white supremacists all around us in america so we can't look at Rwanda and say, well, they got problems. America's got way worse problems than We just had a civil war three days ago. It's so, actually mental. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even speak on that that whole thing. I can't speak on it. So America yeah. has a lot of racial problems. So mm -hmm. we, you can go to any country in this world and find something bad about it. Yeah. Rwanda yeah. is making a great effort, and I think they're doing great things, and they're making strides to make it a better country. I think so. I would live there. I really would. Hmm, that's interesting. That's good. You know, my, my choice is the Gambia. Okay, and why is that? Because I I think the Gambia's got a lot of, uh, what's the word I want to use? Potential. Right, yeah. The only thing I, I will say about the Gambia is they need to get their citizenship stuff together. Mm-hmm. As, as does Ghana, though. Well, well Ghana does have a citizenship by investment. I run an oil company here in Atlanta, one of the largest in Atlanta. One of the oh, largest yeah. in the country, So I got the bread. Yeah. But I'm not going to move to a country where I own, say in Atlanta, I own 150 acres here that I own. Mm -hmm. I Ghana to rent some land. What they call, what is it, leasehold? I don't Yeah, leasehold. leasehold. No, you can, but you can buy freehold land in Ghana. You just need to find somebody that is selling freehold land. And, and I get that. But, you know, for me as an American citizen, for me to move a million dollar business to another country, I need citizenship. Yeah. That, that's a definite, you know, but I shouldn't have to, to give, you know, put a million dollars in your bank. You haven't put any, I don't know if I'll make money there. Mm, yeah, no, but definitely. I, and, and, and so that's what I was talking to Donnie Samir and them and all them about. When you, when you talk to a businessman from anywhere in America or Britain or anywhere, it takes a lot for us to uproot our business because, you know, I want to come home. Mm -hmm. But I want my home to be welcoming to me. You yeah. Know, I look at blacks at them right now. You know, I'm not saying they're still fighting for citizenship. Yeah, I honestly think it's so bad. Like, I think that these countries, especially like the West African countries, should right. make it, like Sierra Leone is doing, make it seamless <laughs> for African-Americans or Africans born, you know, outside yeah. to be able to get citizenship. I think Sierra Leone, like, people should definitely take a leaf out of their book. They set the mark for what any country should do. You know, yeah. for, for number one, we didn't choose to come to America. The mm -hmm. last uh, I'm four generations slave past. 
Yeah. Well, you got to show you wh where's your bloodline from. That's where they stole me from. So I have to go back to where they stole me from. And then try and fight to get a citizenship. It's, I, it's totally stole, terrible. Where they stole me from here. You, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to go to Ghana. Maybe I like Nigeria. Maybe mm -hmm. I like South Africa. Maybe I like the Gambia. I'm an African. Yeah. Because you stole me from somewhere, don't mean I have to return to the same place you stole me from. Yeah. I think, you know, I know Africa is a continent. We all know this. But I'm an African that was stolen from my continent. Let mm -hmm. me face that I feel more comfortable with. Me, yeah. I feel more comfortable either in Rwanda. Like I said, I like the place. But the Gambia really calls me. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I grew up in Gambia, I'm from a rural area. And I know how to farm and I know how to, but you know, but I know how to do business too. And the Gambia needs a person who knows how to gravel those roads. This is mm -hmm. one and you still got clay dirt on the roads. You should have gravel on the road. They have all that gravel and asphalt. They need an asphalt company there and start graveling your roads. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, they, I, I mean, I can't speak for the Gambia, but Ghana even needs the same, the same infrastructure coming through strong and fast. You know, it's like building a, a, a Holiday Inn that's 20 stories tall, but it's on a road that's got potholes and, and, and the bridge is out. Yeah. What good is it if you can't get to it? There's one of the most luxurious hotels in Ghana, and to get there is like an absolute mission. <laughs> you know, it's and if it's raining, forget it. You're not getting there. Now, Vanessa, I'm going to let you go, but I will say this. You know, I'm going to say this as for all the diaspora. Is that I think, and I'm almost, this might be controversial. I think that a lot of times the reason we don't get citizenship, we're considered a threat. Because we know how things should be done. Hmm. So, we know that you should have adequate hospitals. You should have bridges. You should have roads. The police should not be stopping you and shaking you down. So, and I think that when the, when the government, I think the people want us there, but the, some of the governments take us as a threat. That if we get these people over here and they know what their rights are, they know what you know the way people should live, they know what people should get paid, they know that Chinese should not be buying up half of the country. Mm -hmm. But when we move there, there's a problem. Now we're land grabbers. Yeah, that's really strange. You've heard these terms floating around different countries. Yeah, I mean, I've not I've not heard land grabbers specifically, but I probably don't look at the right, you know, at the places that people well, are saying. The, the Gambia, they, they said that the Prime Minister Gambia, but he denied it, so I'm going to give him credit on that. But it was it's in the, it's in the atmosphere. Oh, but, right. But, but it's still in the atmosphere. You know, once the word is out there, it's kind of out there. And mm. so, but my thing is, nobody wants to move anywhere where they feel like the government doesn't want you there. The, mm. Yes, and Gambia want that. Yes, the people in Ghana. When you go on the streets, people love you. Mm -hmm. They learn about you. But why is the government not saying, we'll give you citizenship? Brother, yeah. come on. You're I'm guessing. not living anywhere 15 years to get citizenship when I'm a U.S. citizen. Well, why would I give up my citizenship to go somewhere and be a non-citizen for 15 years? That's what the Gambia requires of you. Oh. Yes. Yeah, no, I don't. I personally don't agree with that. I think that there should be a much easier way to be able to get citizen. There's the right to abode in Ghana, but even that isn't straightforward. Even you know, I I think there should be, it should be pretty easy. You know, it should be easy, just like applying for a visa. But you know what? You know, for the politicians that are looking, then I'm really gonna let you go. We should not have to beg to come home. I work mm -hmm. my butt off in America to be successful. You work your butt off in Scotland to be successful. All these people around this world are coming home. We're coming home with money. With mm -hmm. I wouldn't tell my stepdaughter or my, my daughter-in-law that lives in my house, hey, you come to the house and sleep on the front porch. You mm -hmm. come in the house and sleep in the backyard. We love you, but you know, you can't have a bedroom. I would rather stay here with these people that you know treat me bad. At least I got somewhere to stay. At least I have my citizenship. Mm -hmm. Don't treat me like a Cinderella and tell me that you're my brother and my sister. And I just think Africa should be ashamed of themselves for the way that we're having to fight for citizenships as African, uh, African Americans and European Americans. We don't have a home. So if you love me, 
give me somewhere to come to or just tell me don't come because that's the way I feel. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm mm -hmm. emotional, but it's hurtful that we have to beg to come home. Thanks, sister. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And yeah, I hope that things do change. And if I ever meet the president of Ghana, right. I will tell him. But, but I'm passionate about that. It's, it's hurtful that, you know, that I see blacks that over here begging to come home. They're there, but they're begging for citizenship. Everybody's begging for something to come home, but you love us. I don't feel love. Do you feel love? Do you feel like you're welcome when you come? To, do you feel like your citizenship is just right there for you? I mean, yeah, because my dad is from Ghana, I easily... Well, what if you were not? Well, if my dad wasn't, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, it would be difficult, no. very difficult. Right. So then, but you know, you get in and make all these speeches about, please come home. You know, you don't have to be treated that this way in this country. You're treating me worse. Mm. I don't know what is going on, but I, to be honest, I do quite want to find out. And I always said... I'm not that interested in interviewing politicians, but I think that this, like, especially, you know, what you've said today and this right. video, like, I can now take that to a politician and say, like, what, what is going on, you know, in an, in an interview and just try and get the truth out of them. But I mean, it's politicians are politicians. I, I think really can tell the truth. By everybody, every whiter person in this world and by society. And you say, well, it's finally time to come home. Yeah. But it's a string attached. <laughs> Can't really come home. <laughs> you around, but you're not really one of us. It's terrible. And that, it that's honestly terrible. Like I, I you, feel ashamed for the country. Anybody that's in the diaspora and ask them in their heart, how do they really feel deep down? You feel rejected. Mm. You feel like you're not good enough. You feel like they want you. I gotta pay. To come home, I maybe I got to put a million dollar business here when nobody there is making five dollars an hour, but I got to build a million dollar business to feel like I'm okay. I, yeah, I, I really don't agree with that person personally, and I think they should change it, right? And hopefully, they do change it, or hopefully, there's a way there's a, there's a way to do it easily. But yeah, thanks so much for um sharing, and I really appreciate the support. You too, sister. See you next time. Sorry. See you later. Yeah, but I believe in that part. Bye. See you later. Hi, Kweku. How are you? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but you basically need to put off the, the uh... screen and then just use your phone. Or, or whatever device you're using. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. But I can't hear you. Oh. Okay, I'll let Kweku, um, you know, sort out the logistics. And I just want to say thanks so, 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 so much um, for this um, this support that you guys are giving me. This $100, really, really love it. Really, really love it. So uh, you said, keep up the good work, Vanessa. I've been watching and enjoying your content. Continued prosperity in the new year to you and your family. Right back at you. Um, and then I've kind of missed most of this chat that's going on at the side. So this will be back to the Atlanta chat. Atlanta is the city where, what congregate? What about the state of Georgia? Is run by white supremacy. Interesting. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to, I missed a lot, basically. I missed a lot of the chat going on. Uh, but I will... I will share my link if anybody else wants to join. It seems like a lot of people were agree agreeing with Maximilian. Is United States giving citizen cards so easily? I don't think so. I mean, I, I guess not. I think it's pretty difficult. 
just like in sink kits, my parents are from there, but they can't buy land, but they are selling citizenships. I saw that actually, because I considered going to sink kits on holiday and I saw that they were selling citizenship. And I, I was just like, hmm, that's so interesting. Let's see. Thanks and peace to Vanessa Maximilian. Thank you so much, Mass Bay. I really appreciate your, your support. Um, yeah, no, I really appreciate it as well, Maximilian sharing. And I, I was feeling emotional. I think that it's really terrible the way, especially when I was talking to the lawyer, I, did I upload that part? I actually don't think I did. I spoke to a lawyer about immigration law and he spoke about all the different ways that you could gain citizenship. And I asked him like explicitly, you know, is there not a way for African-Americans to gain citizenship? And he basically was just like, it's not as straightforward as it should be. It's called Super Chats. Okay, thanks very much. I'm obviously a bit behind with the times, with the phrases on on the lives. I guess I'm never really on live, so that's probably why. Lots of guys coming in on the chat, but you know, girls, feel free to also join. Uh, Kweku, hey, how are you? So are you not ready? Lots of guys coming in on the chat, but you know, girls, feel free to Kweku, I feel like Kweku, you, you're, I think you're no, watching you? one device and then you're talking on another device. Kweku, I feel like Kweku. Okay, I mute the TV, but then I don't hear you. Oh, it's a problem. Okay, sorry, Kweku, I feel like it's not going to work out unfortunately hi hey Vanessa how are, how are you doing yeah good thanks how are you whereabouts are you calling from I'm actually calling from Rwanda oh amazing oh my gosh okay so Maximilian was just speaking about Rwanda so <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly I just I just caught it and I was like uh, it's interesting indeed uh, and maybe I thought I would add some clarity also here in Rwanda it's uh, it's also not very easy to get citizenships I guess anywhere else, but like you just said, I think in the US also it's not easy to get uh, citizenship, right? Yeah, and I mean, I, I've never personally tried to get citizenship in the US, but I've heard that, you know, to get a green card is really difficult. But I, I think the whole thing is that that's not the point. I guess the point is that, you know, um, African Americans should be able to get citizenship because they they didn't decide potentially to be in America, you see. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I do I do agree with that. But I think in the case of Rwanda, for example, there's a lot of development that still needs to happen for that to become a smooth process. So um, especially like just like a development inside the country, uh, reconciliation that needs to happen. So the priority on getting Americans uh, or other uh, other black people in the diaspora my citizenship is not that high, I would say. That's that's what I'm seeing. It, But it's on its way. Uh, I think what it said as well is that the government here is very open to that idea of finding ways for he, people like him who have like big businesses there to come and put it in, 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 in on the continent in Rwanda. But I just don't think it's, it's there yet on the priority list. There's just a whole lot of like steps that needs to happen before we, we get there. I don't know how it is in uh, in Ghana, if that's easier. So do you think that basically, are you trying to say that Rwanda has a lot to do before they start inviting in more people into the country? Um, yeah, yes, I would say, yeah, maybe not a lot, but there are just other more pressing things, I would say, that that, that, that also need to happen um, before that is, is there. But I would say for the Americans that are already coming in right now who are like sitting up business the way it is right now, uh, I think they will be like the first in line to, to benefit from any kind of changes, because I think we also have like a certain term of five to maybe 15 years that you can just be staying here, you can get citizenship. Um, but in my opinion, I feel like this, there's just this whole list of like 
you know, this is what the country needs to do to get to its goals. And then easy citizenship to, to foreigners is like a bit on the low side, but it's coming. And I guess it also depends, uh, politics, you never know how it goes, right? So maybe there might be some kind of new development or somebody might have a, a great idea that, that will make great economic sense. And then they might change that. That's one thing that I would say that one is very open to. Everything that kind of makes sense, economic sense, they are really open to, to actually basically change it on the fly and just implement it. So it's possible, but for now, uh, that's how I'm seeing it. I guess, um, you know, taking from Maximilian's point, the sad thing about that is that, you know, and I know it's not your personal thing, but, you know, you're talking about economic sense when this, yeah. it shouldn't be that somebody needs to bring some big business to be able to get citizenship you know like these are individuals like people and I feel like you know it's not all about money of course potentially to these governments that is what it's all about I mean I don't know but for individuals like Maximilian it's not it's not about that you know it's about getting citizenship at home you know yeah, on the government. yeah you, you are you are right you know but this home that they want to come to already has its own children that also are dying need of government support, development. And it does happen through economic development mostly. Once the economy starts popping up, that's when the, everybody in the country kind of starts rising up. I yeah, think. but I guess, I guess they are also children of Africa, you know? Yes, <laughs> yes, you are right, you are right. But I don't know how to say this, but you know the the, the children, the, the African children who live in America and the African children who live in Africa, there's a huge difference in, in the sense of, yes, they might have like their challenges in America, but the children who live in Africa also have challenges. And these are like in a magnitude below, like really down, uh, that is almost uncomparable, you know? Um, so that's what I'm saying before at least we get to that kind of same level, I feel like there's like an eco exchange or, um, yeah, it will happen. That's one thing I can guarantee you. The question is of course, when and which nation, because there are of course 54 nations now in Africa, I'm sure some more developed countries like um, South Africa or Nigeria or Ghana actually might be in a better position to kind of facilitate this much more faster because um, they have already like a huge economy um, on, on their side. But on, on other like countries who are still like struggling, who have like huge population that's living below the poverty line, uh, it's gonna be a, a longer challenge, I would say. So I, I I've got a question to ask you. I don't know if you're interested. I basically I'm so interested to know uh, how it is in Rwanda in terms of you know the dictatorship and are Rwandans happy with that? Ah. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's of course, <laughs> of course, it's also um, that's not how it's it's seen here. Outside of Rwanda, people call it like a dictatorship. People here in Rwanda are actually don't see it like that. They're actually quite happy with the leader that they have, and the more people kind of start throwing terms like "oh, dictatorship," "no freedom of expression," the more actually they kind of rile up and stand behind their leader. In this in this case, Paul Kagame. Um, it makes the country more unified, actually, I would say. More people kind of like try to come up with those kind of terms. So, yeah, that's how that's how it is. That's how I'm saying it. Okay, I, I didn't, honestly, I didn't mean to say it in like a negative connotation. That is just how, you know, I've I've heard of it. Um, yeah. Because, I, I, because in my like view from what I've seen, you know, online and stuff, it seems like so many amazing things are happening in Rwanda. Like I've heard that things work seamlessly it's so clean like you know you're moving at such a um, fast pace and people are yeah. saying that is potentially because you've got one leader and you've had one leader for such yeah. a long time that you've been able to move forward so it's definitely like such a a debate on you know is that necessary to be able to move forward so fast yeah. Yeah, I would say it, it it depends because you also have like uh, Uganda who also has had uh, one leader for a very long time, but it does not, it is not developing at the same rate. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the the quality of leadership does matter. And the, the leadership that we have here in Rwanda is someone who is really, you know, who has like a very long, long term vision basically. And, and he has been put in power for a very long time and it has been benefited 
the country very well because he's such a good leader. He has good leadership um, capabilities. I don't know if that's like the only solution, of course. I think also people who, nations who switch leaders after four, five, six years, I think that can work too. But I think the, the quality of the leader matters. Mm, yeah, I, yeah, that's probably the most important thing. So yeah, thanks yeah. so much. And um, I really appreciate your your feedback on, on Maximilian's comment and also about Rwanda in general. So thanks. No problem, you're welcome. Keep, keep up the good work. Will do, thanks, see you later. Um, okay, so Theo is back, makes a good point when he mentions the different levels of challenges for diasporans and Africans on the continent in regards to citizenship. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, and I also definitely saw um, saw his point. I, I actually, I do, I did see his point, but I, I guess for me, I am very sympathetic to those who are struggling to get citizenship, who w want, and you know, it, I, I actually think it's their right for citizenship, in my opinion. Um, some of these comments in the side that won't be making it up to the thing. Uh, 90k subs, congrats, thanks very much. Okay, I'm going to try Kwaku again. We'll try this this time and see if it works. Hi. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, first of all, we, we definitely appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. My, my children are trying to run in here and get on camera because we love watching your videos. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I love to hear when kids watch as well because I just, um, my uh, kids. Can, can they see you real quick? Yeah, sure. Guys, come see what's up. Hi. Hi, how are you? She said, how are you? Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Thanks, guys. All right, for good, good. I can leave now. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. So I, I I was listening to the beginning when you spoke to um I believe the blind guy, his wife and their family. Yeah. Now, what I have to say is more towards that because we have a question for you. Then things got real serious in terms of citizenship and all that. Yeah. I am born in America with parents who are Ghanaian. Okay. So I fall on both sides <laughs> where I, I think I understand Africans he, saying, is it easy to get citizenship where you're where you live? I understand that because we all have that thought of a sovereign nation. We want to be a sovereign nation. Then being on this side, you're like, OK, African-Americans, uh, um, diasporans inside of the UK they don't necessarily feel like they're home. So they wanna get back to the continent. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that some countries say you need to have so much money to be able to become a citizen or to be able to, to live. Yeah, that sucks. I don't know if it's like that in Ghana. Well, at least they make it easier for you to be a resident <laughs> and yeah. stay there almost forever. Yeah, yeah, I think that if, if citizen, if you don't want citizenship, I think it's pretty easy to go live there and live there forever under um, re like a residential visa. Correct. You're right. Now, that aside, if we go into this, it'll be too deep and then you'll see me on different sides of everything. My main mission with you today is traveling with children. Okay. Um, we're, we're planning to be in Ghana soon. Now we have all these issues with COVID tests and um, we've always had the issue with visa and the, the cost is what I'm talking about. We just actually found an what seems to be an awesome price from New Jersey to Ghana going through Portugal. Mm -hmm. What is your experience with transit? <laughs> so I, I, I've done transit. So when we went to, did we transit to Florida? Yeah, one time when we transited to Florida, we stopped in New York, got out, and then got back on. Uh, and and this time round, we transited. We flew to London, we got off the plane, and then we got back on. 
And my kids are totally fine. My, my daughter is four and my son's seven. And they are totally fine traveling. You know, like obviously they have their devices and I'm not shy of just letting them be on it the whole entire time. <laughs> <laughs> you know so I they can't. watch it when they're on the plane and then there's obviously the different films on and then I'll have coloring pens and whatever to kind of break the time up um but my kids have no issue traveling personally but I know obviously everyone's kids are different I have a feeling my kids will be okay the issue is coming back from Ghana <laughs> the is transit is 11 and a half hours Oh, but you could you could leave the airport, or could you? Would you need a visa for or that? Or do I want to? Oh, right. Okay. But um, I guess, like, research the airport, because some airports have hotels in them. So I've done that before. You can, like, get a hotel room inside certain airports, like Amsterdam has a hotel, and then I just stay in the room. That sounds good. That's actually some good advice. No problem. Um, but one we really thing would I want to see Lisbon, though. Pardon? We, well, we would love to go up and maybe take six of those hours to check out the area, but COVID is not funny. Yeah. No, I've, I've been to Lisbon with my kids, and they absolutely loved it. So okay. COVID aside, if you weren't going during right now, you could extend the, the transit and maybe go to Lisbon for like two nights or whatever, and then get back on the plane, and then and then it breaks up for the kids. Um, one thing I would say is I paid for my son's COVID test in Ghana, and you don't actually have to pay for kids' COVID tests. I know. 12 and under, you don't have to pay. I didn't know oh, that. I'm following all of you. <laughs> I didn't know that, but, yeah, so because I paid in advance. You have to pay in advance now. Right. Here, too. Um, okay, so, yeah, so just in case you did that, because that was really annoying. Now, someone was talking and I was doing some cooking earlier, but you mentioned something about the visa on arrival. That's not for everybody I know, but is it like not happening right now at all? I asked them and they said it wasn't happening. But at the same time, it works for if you're an Afri if you're from an African country, I think you can do it. Don't nobody quote me on this. <laughs> I'll if you're from an African country, you can do it. But if you're from anywhere else, I don't think you can do it. Okay. Okay. And, and and we definitely enjoyed your trip from um, your trip to Ghana, your last trip to Ghana. And my wife actually follows you. So that makes me happy. Oh, that's so nice. I've got two more coming. Uh, I think I'm going to upload one today and tomorrow of trip, the trip with my kids. I'm not really putting their faces in it. People have such a problem with that, but I just I don't want to put them out there like that. I told my wife that exactly, and she agreed. I mean, we have some videos on our, our channel with the kids all up in it because they, they love to be in it, and I'll kill anybody who acts otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, we saw that their faces, you did well with that. I, I, I guess I got to get better at that. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, it's an art. They, they have been, like, I used to, my channel started as, like, a family sort of channel, but then I, right. I turned around and just the way I've realized that, that other people are certain people watching the channel. Then when people started making like hate videos about me, I was like, I would never, ever want my kids to be involved in something like that. I don't know if anybody else is behind me in, in this backstage, but you mentioned something that I guess I want to address real quick. I think that is so stupid. The hate or the, the, the energy we put into other people's lives negative negatively like my I, I have an older son he's half puerto rican okay. he's very like <laughs> imagine him wanting to see to know his other side and having to hear from people who look like me that oh you're not black enough so what are you doing or if he decides to uh, uh have a relationship with somebody else who isn't black having to deal with that we're not welcoming and 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 we talk about pan africanism pan is for so if 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 you're for africa not everyone's going to have the same uh purpose mm -hmm. or be on the same path but we all want to make africa great again so I, I love what you're doing stay strong hold Thanks. your family tight 
it's never going to be easy within our nucleus, within our families. We, we have our issues, but we always need to stay strong and then we make Africa strong. So do what you do. And thank you for allowing me on here. Great. Thanks so much for coming on. And it was great to see your kids as well. So have fun. <laughs> I'll tell them. See you later. Bye. All right. Great. That was really nice. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go in with Vuvu. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi. I love I, I love what you do, Vanessa. I watch oh. your video every single day. I love when you go to Ghana. I love when you show beautiful hotels in Ghana. I love how you present Ghana. Oh, I, I really live in, Whereabouts are you calling in from? I live in Quebec. I am from Cameroon. And uh, I did not know that Ghana is so beautiful. So I was amazed to watch your video and to learn more about Ghana. And uh, it is always a pleasure to know what's happening in Africa, what's happening in <clears throat> other African countries. Uh, I really love your quality, the quality of your video. You are not doing high quality video, but you are doing amazing quality video. Oh, that's so nice. I really appreciate it. I'd love to see Cameroon as well, actually. Um... Oh, it is very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. You need to visit one day, you know. The only thing is I don't speak French, so... Uh, no, that, that's not true. Is because we have, like, it is like Canada. I live in Canada, in Quebec, but we have a lot of people coming from the other side of Canada, and they live there and they speak English. In Cameroon, okay. it's the same. When you go to the French-speaking side of Cameroon, a lot of people coming from the English side are there, and they are living there. Oh, so right. we have a we have a lot of places where people don't even speak French. When I go there, I have to speak English. So oh, that is not. I, actually, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I need to do more research. Yeah, no, no. People don't know that they say a lot of things, but that that's okay. I understand. You know, if you go to Yaoundé, the capital, a lot of English speak, uh, English speaking people are there. They live there. They have businesses there. It is very safe. It is beautiful. You are all the. I know that a lot of people they love to see buildings, beautiful hotels. So it is the perfect place for you because you have all those stuff over there: buildings, hotels, and you know houses. And, yeah. Mm. Oh, I need to. I need to. I'm adding Cameroon for my list for yeah. this year. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that inspired me. So thanks very much. Yeah, you need, and uh, a guy said something. I think it is Maximilian about the citizenship. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know if it is possible for all African countries to do exactly what Liberia and Sierra Leone are doing, because in a case of a country like Cameroon, I don't know for others, a lot of people migrate, what we call the Bantu migration. They, they, they migrate from Cameroon and Congo to the east and the southern part of Africa. Okay. So all those people, when they do their DNA test, they have Cameroon and Congo. It is not only America. It's a guy from Kenya, from South Africa, from Zambia, they, all of them have Cameroon and Congo. So if we have to give the citizenship because your DNA test say you are from Cameroon and Congo, we will give the, the citizenship to the world of East, Eastern Africa, Southern Africa first, and then outside of Africa. So then so, you think there would be like basically too many people in the country? I don't know if it is realistic. So imagine the, 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 you know, so maybe it is possible for Ghana, but for a country like Cameroon, Congo, mm, this will be extremely difficult, extremely. But do you think that those that have migrated within Africa to these other countries like Southern Africa and mm. Eastern Africa, do you mm. think that they would want to move to Cameroon and Congo? Like, think, do you think they want to move back now? I think they want to move to Ghana, not Cameroon, Congo, because Ghana is a trend. So we don't, for the moment, even have to face the, the, that situation. So Ghana has to deal with that. Mm. For it's, the it's moment. Really, it's an in, a very interesting debate slash situation that's going on because, you know, I guess if we do think about I guess it's a question of how many people are we really talking about in terms of, in general, you know, how many people actually are going to go for citizenship? 
I don't know that uh, these things of uh, citizenship would be very difficult for Cameroon. The, the, the both countries, Cameroon, Congo, they don't even accept dual citizenship. So when you take the, the citizenship oh. of those countries, you leave the American citizenship. Oh, can, right. Can, okay. can you leave the American citizenship? You believe? So do you, so you're just a Cameroonian citizen? Yeah, I'm just a Cameroonian citizen. I, I can have the, the Canadian citizenship, but I, I don't want that. I just keep my uh, citizenship from Cameroon and I live with, with that, no problem. Okay, oh, that's good. So you have to accept that you cannot just, you know, have uh, America, Cameroon, Congo, Canada, you cannot do that. But you see, uh, Ghana is very good because Ghana have, uh, has organized the year of return. Ghana accept uh, dual citizenship. So Ghana is a good opportunity and it is still Africa. So mm -hmm. me personally, I don't have a problem. You can go, you can be from Cameroon, you go, you visit Ghana, Nigeria, that is Africa. No problem for me. You see, you can go to Cameroon. You basically go. like you can go to Ghana, but don't come to Cameroon. No, you can go to Cameroon, but I mean, you, you do whatever you want. But uh, for me, because me, I know that uh, a lot of Af African American Jamaica, when you talk about Cameroon, they think it is a war zone where people will kill you and those stuff. So I don't want to deal with those, uh, you know, discussion. So me, I say, you go wherever you want, Ghana, Nigeria, if you think you are safe there, that's okay. It is still Africa, you know, but we mm. cannot just force people go to, go to this country, go to this country. No, you have to accept. You see, yeah. so they go wherever they want. You have to accept. If they believe they are safe there, that is very good. You understand? But at the same moment, in those uh, Central African countries, people are going there, white people, to invest like 80 billion of dollars. Mm -hmm. You see? And then so, what, get citizenship? Or no? Not. Without, without citizenship. Oh, right, okay. You mm -hmm. see? That is why if you say that you need citizenship to invest, in Africa, they know that other people will go there and invest without citizenship. So there is a problem. Yeah, I, I guess it's just like us, as as humans have a different perception as like government who must be quite money orientated. Yeah, no, they just want money, but it would be better if we give them the citizenship, you know? Mm -hmm. But for Cameroon, I don't know exactly what we can do because we have this uh, Eastern Africa thing, Southern Africa thing, and the outside of Africa, for us, it is very difficult. But I think Ghana can do that. Nigeria yeah. can do that also. And uh, yeah, that is what I wanted to share with you. And uh, I want okay. to leave. So Okay, great. Thanks very much. Do your good job and bye-bye. Uh, Thanks, bye. Um, very interesting comments. There's some interesting comments coming down the side as well. Uh, we're not the same as diasporans. Yeah, I mean, this is what I was trying to say, you know, people that have migrated to other parts of Africa, I think that's very different from um, African Americans trying to gain citizenship. So um, automatic citizenship must be open. They are children of Africa. This is what I was trying to say to not the last caller. A couple of callers ago, I was trying to say that as well. Everyone should speak Swahili as the sub-Sahara language. Great. Well, it's been quite a long one, guys. <laughs> a whole hour and 20 minutes into this call. If anyone else would like to join, Vanessa, can a Ghanaian have a Nigerian citizenship and still remain Ghanaian? Yeah, because you can have dual citizenship as a Ghanaian, then surely it can be dual with anything. I don't think they're saying, no, you can't be dual with Nigeria. <laughs> Although I'm sure some people in like the comments section might have something to say about it. But um, yeah, I don't see why not. But at the same time, you can. Um, obviously, like either as ECOWAS, so as an ECOWAS passport holder, you can travel to any of the the ECOWAS countries. So I don't know if that would really be like necessary, but if anybody wanted to do that, I'm sure it's fine. 
Um, a can tribesman, would you like to join? Hello. Oh, hello. How are you? Um, yeah, first time on your platform. <laughs> I've definitely seen your name about before, though. Yeah, as an Akan tribeswoman, you definitely realize it. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to go to our city and do it justice anyway? Come on, see. I need to go. Um, that's what I was just talking about, actually, earlier in this live. I've got okay. people, friends that went in a day trip. I mean, I want to go for longer, but because I've not been going to Ghana for like a very long time, um, I've yeah. not been able to spend the time that I want to spend there. I want to go and spend some time there, you know, like go for a week or whatever. So maybe yeah. that's what I need to do. Next time I go, I need to just plan my time better so that I can go. Cause I definitely want to go to my dad's village and stuff like that as well. Yeah. yeah I saw Stormzy there. I think Stormzy is down there right now. Are you there now? No, 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 no. I'm stuck in London. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm stuck uh, in London. Yeah, yeah we're I having it hard with I COVID down there. <laughs> Storm went um, and filmed a music video, I think, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah, sure I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to make a comment about um, the uh, black African Americans. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll I'll come from the angle of the um, Ethiopian Jews. You know, bi biblically, uh, Israel is all part of Africa anyway. Because, I mean, if you look at the Jews, most of them originated from um, the Ethiopian Jews, black Jews, they came from there. So if there's any problem in Ethiopia, the Israelis come and ship them all or bust them all back to Israel most of the time. So there's always, there's a special arrangement for those people who were originally from Israel, you know, by Israel. And I think that African Americans are a special case, despite the fact that we have, like the brother just said, like um, most most Bantus come from Cameroon, like the East Africans, uh, South Africans, and even some West Africans. Um, their case is, I mean, African American cases is, is very different from from the rest of us, because I mean, they they weren't literally. They didn't actually travel out from their of their own accord. You know, they were literally shipped out. So basically, I believe that when it comes to citizenship and even visa and so many other um, arrangements, I think that they should have their own special arrangements with the whole of West Africa and Central Africa, because it's not fair for somebody whose ancestors didn't actually <clears throat> have no power to actually decide on their on their des destiny to actually be penalized simply because you're a foreigner. Obviously, we're all different tribes. I mean, you are an Akan, I'm an Akan, someone is Ghan, someone is Yoruba. The African-Americans are also their own tribe. I mean, we've got also Blacks or um, Africans in South, South America. So basically, I believe that, you know, they should have a special arrangement with ECOWAS and also Central Africa where most of them come from. So that, that's my take on that. Yeah, no, I mean, I totally agree. So I was quite surprised for some of my guests this evening mm. to have basically a, a different opinion on that. Mm. Mm. You know, um, because, yeah, because if you look at cities like Lagos, uh, Monrovia, and uh, Freetown, these three cities are cities made up of diasporans. If you take Lagos, for instance, my dad is Nigerian and my mom is Ashanti. And if you look at Lagos, most of the, my families in Lagos are from the old Brazil. Like people forget that the uh, diasporans were shipped from Brazil back to Nigeria, Lagos, you know? Mm. Yeah, which means that half of the city are not indigenous Africans who are Yorubas. Same thing you can say with Monrovia, with the uh, is it Americo Liberians? Same thing with Sierra Leone, the people from Nova Scotia. So basically, we still have that where people were shipped out, shipped in, you know, without their own, you know, power to do anything. So I believe that there should be special dispensation for them. That's mm -hmm. my take on that. Yeah. No, I mean, I would, I would love to see it in Ghana and in other countries, following people like yeah. Sierra Leone. 
uh, and what yeah. they're doing. So hopefully yeah. we will see it soon. One thing I like about Liberia though is that if you're not if you're not um, of African origin, you can't actually buy land because what they're trying to do is to stop people from just land grabbing, which I believe mm -hmm. that that's something that I think the, the rest of Africa should replicate because you get the Chinese or other people just coming in and just grabbing lands and then you realize that your whole <laughs> your whole ancestral lands is gone. I mean, that's, that's the land issue. But when it comes to citizenship where people really want to come and settle, then, you know, th th there should be ways for them to do that. Anyway, I believe that there might be other people waiting, but please try and get to Kumasi. We need you, Kumasi. Yeah, no, I want to see you, I'm I see you Kumasi. I'll be in Kumasi. Okay, fine. Next time I go, I'll I'll make a promise. I'll go to Kumasi. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right. See you later. Take care. Bye. 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 So it looks like I'm going to Kumasi pretty soon, then, guys. <laughs> um. Okay. Let me see what the comments are saying. Uh. I am Jamaican. What's the difference from the Af? Africans in America or the Caribbean or in Latin America who were traded between colonizers ran away establishing their own communities. Don't know if that's a statement or a question. Um, oh, thanks. That's so kind. Being Italian. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, I can't have dual citizenship, but I was born from Ghanaian parents in Italy had to decline the Ghanaian citizenship to gain Italian citizenship at the age of 18, but can't have both. I've heard that that's the same with the Netherlands because we have the Achano family who, you know, another channel on YouTube, they also can't have dual citizenship. So they have got their, um, their, <laughs> their other citizenship. Basically, you know, they can't have the Ghanaian citizenship as well. In due time, the process will change, but I don't think the African continent infrastructure can support such mass move agenda 2063. I think that is what the, uh, the Cameroonian guy that I spoke to and also the uh, Rwandan guy were speaking about. They were trying to say that there's not enough the infrastructure isn't there yet but I mean I, I I would say okay yeah the infrastructure is not exactly there 100% in Ghana but I don't think that that's a reason um, not to allow people citizenship who should be you know just given it as part of a birthright. Hi Kweku how are you? Hey I'm good you remember me? Yeah I think so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've been looking out for your videos, but I haven't seen you up in a while. And I just saw you came online. I'm like, ah, he's yeah. gonna go hear what he has to say. I don't know what you're talking about, but I always have something to share. So, oh, okay. So, what are you talking about? I mean, we've spoken about a whole range of topics. I spoke about traveling with my kids for the first time, um, and then a lot of different people have been speaking about uh, African Americans gaining citizenship and how difficult it is to gain citizenship in certain countries in Africa. Uh, and then some people are saying, so there was two people that said that they didn't think that there was the right infrastructure there to basically open the the citizenship for African-Americans. Whereas I feel like um, it should be like a birthright. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm kind of like biased because I've lived with these people and I really disagree. I mean, you might be from here and they will DNA test and everything might say that you were from you, but are you really from here? From and, where? And where, where, like, where are you? you? What's where are you calling from? So yeah, I'm I'm calling from Ghana. I just got to Accra from Kumasi. I heard um I can't price my telling you to come to Kumasi and stuff like that. Yeah, I've been in Ghana for two weeks now. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I kind of like really disagree because um say seven eight years ago, being from Africa was a this like you African you kind of like slow you're supposed to be stupid that's how they saw us so now if so being who african saying, who are you saying they can you be quite specific uh, african americans blacks right. yeah in america i don't know i don't know about london i don't know about 
any other country, but that's how they saw us. I mean, people move from the country like across oceans and stuff like that. It would take time for them to get used to the system. But if you see that person in the landing stage and think they're stupid, when being from Africa is a days, you can't just turn around and come and be like, hey, my DNA says I'm from Ghana, so give me Ghanaian citizenship. No, there has to be a way. If you want to gain citizenship, you have to go there, live there, and then end it. We can't just give you a birthright because um, now being from Africa after, um, what's the movie again? Uh, Coming to America. After Black Panther, oh, being Black from Panther. Africa became like a, like a, well, cool. like a hype or something. Yeah, people which kind of yeah. like, hey, I'm from here, I'm from here, I'm from here. No, you can't just come here and earn. You have to earn it, live here, earn it. You can't just, being a birthright, so I, guess it's I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm kind of like biased because I've, I've lived with them and they really make me mad. So I, you just, you, like anything else, you have to earn it. We can't just go to America and be like, um, I want to be an American citizen and be a citizen. You have to yeah, go but there. I, live there. But I do think it is very different because I think that, um, you know, like if I went to America, I have no tie to America at all. So for me yeah. to then say I want to be a citizen, like yeah for what like not for what but obviously I would have to go through a process but it's a different situation for, for African Americans like they have descendants from from Africa so it's not like they're just arriving at somewhere that they have no connection to uh, and then now they have to as you say um like gain it in some way it's like they actually have descendants just like my dad's from Ghana yeah it's my exact dad so I, I know that but, you know, not that far back. They also have people from these countries. I do understand when it comes like that. Like, I, I have a mixed, a mixed baby. If he wanted to be Ghanaian, he's Ghanaian. Yeah. But, like, from African-Americans that have lived there for, like, generations and generations, like, since slavery, you can't just do a DNA test and be like, hey, I'm from Ghana, I'm from Nigeria. So just move to Nigeria and be a Nigerian citizen in two days or be a Ghanaian citizen in two days. I believe that if you think you're from there, your DNA test say you're from there, and you want a citizenship, move there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do think you probably, if you're going to be getting citizenship, or maybe you don't want to live there, maybe you just want to travel there freely. But yeah. anyway, what I want to get to is I feel like you're saying this from your experience of potentially having a bad experience in America. Is that what you're saying? It's, no, it's a general experience. I mean, I see how they treat Africans like all the time. Like most of them, like there are a few good people in them, but most of the time I would say white people treat Africans better than blacks. Like African-Americans treat Africans. It would be yeah. good to get an African American into this this exact conversation because I feel I know. like I wish, I wish I wish there was somebody somebody in here. I mean, there, there are some that are like very open to learning about African something. I mean, they some of them even think we're still living trees. That's what they that's what they actually believe till they yeah, see. Is that, is that is is that their fault? Like, I'm honestly at the point I'm on the sort of view of what they show in in the west or the global north they don't show um what i'm showing on my channel for example so how can we uh, expect people to see something that isn't being shown okay let me add dan fee parker and, and hope that he's hi hello um kwaku i'm What's actually on, I, how's it going i think i'm in i'm in i'm in probably like 95 percent agreement with kwaku because you I what? think I'm 95% in agreement with you. Yeah. So, so, and, so uh, Nancy, where, where are you, um, whereabouts are you at the moment? And uh, I'm in Toronto, but I grew up in the States. Okay, and what's your you know, lineage as we're speaking about this exact situation? I was, I was actually born in Ghana. I came here when I was eight, and then uh, I moved to the States after, I don't know, I think I was like 10 when I moved to the States, been there for been there and then came back here to Canada and married a Canadian. So now I'm living in Toronto. And I was just recently in Ghana um, last year, around this time, actually. Um, but what Kwaku is saying, there's a lot of validity to it because what the point he's making is that growing up in the States, there's a, this isn't, again, I'm not blaming African-Americans per se for their attitude, but there's a persona 
about Africans in America, right? And and I'm gonna say this like across like all Americans. Like I think there's a there's a crazy stat about the amount of Americans that have passports, which means that it's like a small small like percentage. That means they don't travel at all. And no. one thing I will say that Americans that have travel are different. They have a different mentality. I'll give you that. Like they're they're just they they've seen the world. Um, they've encountered different cultures, so they have a different kind of mentality towards things, and their ignorance is not as like jarring, right? But if yeah. you talk to if you talk to Americans who haven't traveled, and Vanessa, when I mean like they haven't traveled, like they could probably be in the same city and not even be able to go to the next town, <laughs> their whole lives, like their whole lives, right? So it breeds some kind of ignorance, right? So when they think of Africa, they think of like kids on TV with like listening with the um, Sarah McLaughlin music in the background, with flies on their face, like with a big bellies. That's what they think. Like they don't, they don't really think that there's educated, you know, progressive potential in the country, right? So when they think about coming here, like here's a, the, the the modern phenomenon of people wanting to come to Africa is new. It's very new. Yeah, no, I, I know that. I've been going since I was two, two, three years old, and everyone was like, "Why? What are you going to do there?" And thought that I don't know what they thought I was doing. Um. Until now, you know, that's when I realized, like, I have literally been going there since I was a baby. And only now are people, well, the past few years, when I really, you know, started speaking about my channel, are people interested? Only now are people like, wow, that's so cool. It wasn't cool. Like, I know, I know that people didn't think it was cool back then. And nobody think, was going. I think once one of the things that probably you probably don't understand how well your channel and you and like Wado What's his name? How do you say Wode Maya. Wode Maya. I think one of the things that you guys don't understand what you're doing is that you're giving light to, you're shedding ignorance by your videos. Because a lot of people don't understand that there are beautiful aspects of um, Ghana or even African countries. There are beautiful aspects of um, the culture. And there are there is potential if you want to go there and be a part of the, the culture, right? It's all there. So that's that's kind of like what you create with your videos. And that's why I like I think I'll give you credit for that and I'll value that. But what Kwaku is saying, like he's not being like I, I understand what he's saying. That's why I say I, I'm 95 percent agree with him. But I, the five percent where I don't I'm like different is that. There are a lot of African-Americans who have a real affinity towards Africa right now, a genuine one. Right. Mm -hmm. And part of that is also because of, like the new awareness of like, you know, just like slavery and how it's just impacted everything in the West and them being stripped of their identity and all that stuff. So there's a huge like desire to know their history and where they're from. Right. And there's some that are really interested, even at work. I have people who ask me about Ghana and one man who wants to retire there and he's trying to get me to connect him with people there. Right. Cause he wants to live there, you know, and, and, and be there forever. Right. So there is there is a group of people that do really genuinely care about being part of the culture, um, assimilating and taking on the natural cultures of of the country. As far as like citizenship goes, like what what Maximilian was saying was like he has a million dollars and like they're asking him to you know pay for. It. Listen, if you have money, if you're rich in any part of the world and you go to another country, citizenship comes easily. Let's just let's just put it's just mm -hmm. factual, right? Now, I agree with you in one of your points that said that, like, with, with the ancestry and, like, the, like, the translating slave trade, we should, Africans should be more sympathetic to welcoming African-Americans back. And I, I'm not, I think, like, the great majority of Africans probably have that sympathy, but I think it's easier said than done. Because even me, being Gandhian, I can speak the language. Going back in, uh, to Ghana, I understood, but there's a different mentality there. There's just yeah. a different mentality, right? Um, it's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily backwards. And I had to fess up. I had to face my own ignorance, like my own snobbery, Western snobbery, right? Because I have a friend there who's building a hotel. He left the States and he's building a hotel in um, Somania. And when I went out with him, him and another friend, and I was just like, just really like harping on why the infrastructure is so bad, the roads, the potholes, the sewage, all this stuff. And he was like, you know, when I when I first came to Ghana, I had the same ideas as you. You know, I was really like fired up about these things. But he said, once I've been here, you start to see that there are other things more important than those things. Not to say mm -hmm. that those things aren't important, but they're more pressing matters, right? 
And when he said that, I didn't understand it. But when I left Ghana and I, I had a really bad encounter there, but uh, I started to see that, okay, yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Like I was going there with my own snobbery. Like there's the roads in Toronto is terrible. And this is a Western world. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like there's one road here that's like been under construction for almost like six, seven years and they're still not done. And this is supposed to be like the Western world, right? Mm -hmm. Mind you, they're putting like a subway line on it, but still, it's still been taking years to do. So I think like, I think most Africans, and that's one thing I like about the, the current president of Ghana is his appeal to the diaspora to come back. My only thing is like, how do we get these, the talent that we have abroad to come back and think that they can stay? Do you know what I mean? Like that they don't have to live between two worlds because that's what most people that are like well off or, you know, adequate or gifted in some way they feel like if they go to africa and establish something they don't it's almost like they want to live within two worlds like i'll go to africa for six months and then i'll come back here right and how do we get like that mentality where like okay i don't want citizenship just because i want to be able to go back and forth but i want citizenship to invest in the country to stay yeah. there and to, to per perpetuate a mentality like we don't leave our country like we go and visit other countries but like we're investing in the future of this country you know what i mean mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, um, I mean, I know people like my sister being one, she has gone and she's lived and she doesn't think she's ever coming back. But I also know a lot of people who are like, I'm going to spend six months there and six months, you know, back here so that I can have like the home comforts. And to your point of um, the, the different mentality, the interesting thing I think about about the mentality is when you realize, yeah, what is actually important. And I think what people really love about Ghana is like the community feel. Mm -hmm, and like, mm -hmm. that, isn't, that isn't in the mentality. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not completely, but it's it's kind of like gone, you know, like that feeling of, and even me going with my kids, I'm always watching my kids, like, and I'm saying, obviously you should, but over there people are just like, their kids are just like about, you know, and actually it's nice for the kids to feel that sense of freedom. But mm -hmm. me with my mindset of like everything I've been told that can happen to your kids, I'm like, oh, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Do you know what I mean? That they, that people are working differently and operating differently, but yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Um, and I do hope that people do want to go and stay. So do you think that people should be able to get citizenship easily, African-Americans? I, I do. I think, I think um, even when my wife and I went last year, uh, we had to go through just, just a, a lot of bureaucratic things that is expected, right? But I think the God of Embassy made us some things a little bit too extra, right? And mm -hmm. I, like, I think um, they, could, they could make it a little bit more like, easier uh, and more affordable for some people. Um, not everyone is able to afford some of these, like the Z visa payments and all the things that go into it. Cause like you have to factor in the shots, the malaria pills, all that stuff, right? Like, and it, it, it becomes pricey. I think if somebody is looking like someone like an African American who wants to go to the other part of the world, I think in the same way that when my dad came to Canada, like when we were sworn into um, to Canadian citizenship, we had to kind of know something about the country, right? Mm. And, and then you have to give a pledge of becoming, of like, to contribute to the citizenship of the country, to make the country better, right? So I think, I think citizenship should be given to um, African Americans returning home, the diaspora coming home, on the basis that they can make a pledge, you know what I mean, like a, a commitment to the betterment of the country, right? We're not saying that you need to know the language right away, because that's going to take some time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but, but that we would that you would make a pledge and that you would, um, you know, uh, seek to come in with some kind of, some form of like humility and desire to be a part of a new, a new culture because it is a new culture. It's completely different from the West, you know? Um, and the mentality is different and different is not always bad. Different can be good, you mm -hmm. know, different. And like, I think I watched another video of some lady from Zambia. She said like trinkets and, and technology doesn't make a society. And that's what the West is. It's community. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a bond and, um, it's it's just sharing ideas and moving forward with the ideas because those other things can happen quickly. Infrastructure can happen quickly, but the value of a society, the morality of a society, the mentality of a society, that takes years to really establish. You know what yeah. I mean?
yeah, years. I feel like decades, if not, you know, I mean, it's either there or it's not, in my opinion. Right, right. Um, okay, yeah. Darren. Um, yeah. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having Hello. me on. Thanks, Tanfi. Nice to meet you. Love the videos, Vanessa. We, we're really enjoying them. I just want to say, I'm just to give a bit of background. My father's Ghanaian. Um, my mother comes from an island called Dominica in the Caribbean. Oh, now, um, my best friends you know, uh, have done. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice. So I'm privileged to know both sides. I've been going to Ghana now for the past more than uh, 25 years. Um, and I've been going to Dominica since I was a child. So and one, my mom actually lives half of the year in Ghana. Um, so when she goes over with my dad and um, my wife and I have just built a house in Ghana as well. So. I think I've got some interest in this. In terms of citizenship, um, I think, look, people have to realize that there was a lot of ignorance on both sides. When I was growing up, I had people from, yes, the Caribbean making fun of me because my dad was from Ghana, but I also had a lot of Ghanaians saying, oh, you Jamaican, even though I've got nothing to do with Jamaica, you know, in a very disparaging way. There was ignorance on both sides. So I do understand, you know, like previous callers, like Kwaku saying, oh, African-Americans look down on him and blah, blah, blah. I understand that. I had that from both sides. What people like you are doing and what, what Emaya is doing is you're breaking down that ignorance. You're mm -hmm. showing people, especially people from the diaspora, what Ghana especially is really like. And that's the, that's the best medicine to break down all of these barriers. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing in terms of investment is because people are seeing what Ghana is like. They, they, I show it to a lot of my cousins who are Dominican. They're surprised, they're shocked, and they're happy to see it. And one of my cousins really wants to come to Ghana as well. You see, it's opening up the place. And we're not talking about people who are going to be a burden. We're talking about people who will contribute culturally, financially, you know, in, 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 and communication. I'm the product of a, of a woman from Dominica and man from Ghana. Completely separate culture. I can tell you the cultures are very different. And I've been enriched by having both cultures. And I think all of us would be enriched by the diaspora getting more involved with Africa and Africans also engaging more with the diaspora. How many people on this um, call actually have even heard of Dominica? Mm. Right? And how many you know, so this is the thing. We need to get to know each other, you know, and we need to build bridges and we need to invest. You know, that, that's yeah. what I wanted to say. But yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, Dominica looks so beautiful, obviously, because my best friend's um, fr from there. She actually lived there for, I think, five years of her life. So I've seen it and it looks incredible. <laughs> it is. Um, so in the Caribbean. It's very beautiful. How how was your building journey in Ghana, building your house? Uh, now, you see, I tell you, many times I felt like giving up. Many times my wife felt like giving up. Um, and luckily, we supported each other because I don't think we felt like that at the same time most of the time. So, you know, when wow. one felt down, the other felt up. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it was difficult. But you know what? We, we started, um, I'd say, about 15 years ago. And mm -hmm. thank God we did it then. Things were a lot cheaper then. Um, you know, so I, I don't know if I could do that now. I'd probably be doing some of the, you know, some of the things that you're showing on your channel, you know, where, where you buy, you know, houses that are built already. I would, we'd probably do something like that. But um, definitely, I mean, the experience was, was it was joyful and, and sad at times as well, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Congratulations. So happy to hear that. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your thoughts as well. See you later. Thank you for having me. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Wow, amazing. I literally never really meet people from uh, Dominica, um, but I, I, it's another place that I need to go. Uh, someone said, oh, sorry, I meant to click that one. Darren, I'd love to hear more from you. Vanessa, get his contacts. Actually, yeah, Darren, feel free. Send your uh, send me an email if if you can, um, and we could discuss. You know, being I think that's a really interesting mix as well, Caribbean and um, African. I'm trying to get back in. Sorry, uh, some people are trying to get on. Hi, Sharp Pat. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? 
I'm good. First time calling in, but I've been following you. Actually, you were the first YouTuber bringing African con content that I've actually watched. You led me to Woda Maya, actually, not the other way around. So oh, wow. it's interesting to see how much your channel has grown. I am someone who was born in Jamaica, but I've lived in two other countries. I'm planning on my way to Africa, hopefully in the next few months, made an investment there, Ghana specifically. And um, you've done a lot in terms of bringing um, Ghana. I mean, I was shocked the first time I watched your channel and saw the development. You, you, you know, I mean, you went all around um, showing us beaches and, you know, building of apartments and condos and homes. And it was just amazing to see Africa from that perspective. So I want to thank you for that. But it was really sad to listen to both Theo is back. I also watch his channel and the other uh, uh, Kweku. It was sad to hear that there are Africans that feel that kind of way about people in the diaspora. Specifically, I'm not African American, but I've lived in the US and I've lived in Canada also. And I'm, I'm from the Caribbean. So I think I, I'm I can bring something to, to this conversation. And I think it's unfair to say African-Americans um, don't like Africans, generally speaking, and to say that white people actually treat Africans better. If he considers a paternalistic attitude that a lot of Europeans have towards African, if he considers that to be better treatment, then it's kind of sad to hear someone say that in this day and age, just the way that Africans have had a colonialized background, just as we've had in the Caribbean, and have had certain attitudes towards African Americans, doesn't mean that it's right. They were, they've were they also been bamboozled. They've also been told a lot of lies about African Americans. African Americans have been told a lot of lies about Africans. But in a lot of ways, at least they got to see what was happening in America on their television screens. African-Americans and even people in the Caribbean were pretty much, we, we weren't allowed to see anything about Africa except for the negative. And so it's not unusual that the, the, the views that we have would be grounded from that perspective. So I was really surprised to hear Kweku say that. And then to deal with Theo, um, now I understand when um, Go Black to Africa did a piece on Rwanda because he was pretty gung ho about Rwanda, and then he, he when he and his wife and family went there, and he did his last um, coverage on Rwanda. He made um, a, um, a speech about the fact that there was a sense that the people there had not dealt with some of the issues that they had um, based on you know their history with the genocide and. I sensed listening to Theo that there is some resentment about people coming in because of the problems, the social problems that Rwandans are, Rwandans are going through. And I think it kind of makes me kind of sit back and think, wow, I think a lot of what diasporans who are thinking of going there need to really take stock of that and to realize that they may be walking into a situation where there's a lot of resentment um, I mean, I don't want to say generally speaking, but just taking from what he said today and also the observations of Go Black to Africa. And I think one of the reasons why Ghanaians um, or Ghana has been a destination for most people is probably because um, Ghana has always kind of held an open hand and said, come even way before other African countries were saying coming in. And I'd love to see Ghana open up even more in terms, of, you know, I know the residency requirements are pretty open, but ultimately that they'll get to a place where they'll offer citizenship, um, you know, in a more open way. Thanks for the platform and I wish you all the best. And it was happy, I was happy to see you and your family in Ghana, this the last set of um, posts you made with the family. And I mean, I was so excited of the spots you were showing. I actually shared your video with Go Black to Africa. I sent it to his email because I was like, he kind of left a bad taste in some of the Ghanaians, you know, um, Ghanaians were kind of upset. Some Ghanaians were upset with him because he, you know, but I was just saying here, see, there's also another side, you know, there's, you know, anyway, thanks a lot. Yeah.
Thanks so much. Wow, you covered your point so well. <laughs> like, you know, um, I I agree with you. I was quite shocked at what Theo said. and But I also find it very interesting to see different people's perspectives. And also, obviously, everyone is, is open to their own opinion. But it does show you and kind of give you a perspective on what potentially some people might be thinking in that country. Um, and I really appreciate, you know, the fact that you shared my video, like, thanks so much. <laughs> that means a lot to me. And also that you've been watching me for all this time. Honestly, I just love to hear it. So thank you. And Jamaica is another place that is definitely on my hit list. My son is actually a quarter Jamaican. So we need to go. Oh, I need to show him his, his you shared, you shared. It shares a lot with Ghana, actually. Um, we have a lot of, you know, cultural stuff that foods and stuff, like things I remember as a kid, you know, that, you know, actually we've traced back to Ghana. Some phrases we use, some of the foods we, we've had over the years and all that. So Jamaica shares a lot with Ghana. So it would be great for you to go there. Yeah, will do. Great. Thanks so much. Talk to You're you welcome. Bye-bye. Wow. Loved that. Really, really loved what she had to say there. Um, okay, let's go for the next person. Somebody said this, but a lot of people in Ghana have told me that um, Jamaicans and Jamaica is similar. Free visa to Jamaica. That's what Ghana needs to be doing. I feel like I need to like go in to the tourism authority and tell them things that need to happen to make it easier to travel there. I mean, the free visa thing needs to happen because the fact that it cost us like five hundred pounds plus for the three visas—that's a lot of money. Um. Okay, let me go for Yao. Hello. Hey, Vanessa. Hi, how are you? Great. Hey, great fan of yours. Been watching your shows and fan of your channel. So just to add to what the other guys said, um, I live in the States. Some of them might be, you know, um, individual experiences with people, right? So you can generalize that for everybody. Um, I mm -hmm. think people in the States have genuine interest of going to the motherland to interact and experience what's going on there. Over the years, they've not had social media. We've all not had social media. So you only watch what shows on your TV. And the closest you can get to is Discovery Channel or National Geographic. And it's all in the jungle, right? So they don't have all the experiences we see now on, on YouTube and social media. So um, you can't fault them for having um, little knowledge about, about Africa. Now, I think with citizenship, if they can do what Sierra Leonean is doing, if you have a majority DNA that shows you are of a certain country, I mean, I think they should be able to allow you to at least have residency over there at a minimum, you know, and then they can work towards getting citizenship later on or something else. So travel can be easy. Now, mind you, when people travel, they spend over there, right? So they invest in the economy one way or another. They don't really have to establish a business to invest. So it can do a few things that might help the economy and also help the culture. So that's all I have to say. Great. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I do think, like, obviously, it's individual, people's individual experiences. Um, and I, I think it can it can be it, it would be a good thing for that. And I do think it's it's not difficult to get residency at the moment in Ghana, but I've never done it myself, so I'm not sure. But thanks so much, Yao. And uh, yeah, talk to you later. Great. Um, okay, I'm gonna go for somebody that's got their camera on. Vanessa, I can't wait to go. Can't wait to go to Ghana to see those villas you made a video on. Thanks. Uh, okay, I'm going for you, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. You need to unmute your mic. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, great. Well, as I say, well, uh, congratulations for your channel. I mean, you're showing amazing content and, you know, like full support of yours. Just a quick one in comment with what one of the guys said. Basically, I'm the Italian guy that posted a comment saying that I had to refuse mm -hmm. my citizenship. Yes. Yeah. So 
in my case, for example, I've got my little son here, right? Who's, <laughs> who's, um, well, half British, half Italian, you know, but as you can see, I'm not white, you know, as like a typical Italian. So my question to the people who are saying that, you know, uh, people should work for the citizenship, yeah? Assuming that my son, Jalen, one day would like to be Ghanaian, right? What would he have to do? Because technically I am Ghanaian, the grandparents are Ghanaian, the great grandparents are Ghanaian, you know? So I think it's a bit sad thinking that people, you know, kind of tackle the situation the way they are. In terms of, you know, I don't think um, hatred and, you know, we should tackle, you know, these people back with hatred. Rather, we should encourage people and educate them by inviting them to to our country and then actually show them their origin, you know, because... Yeah, no, definitely. So has your parents also denounced their Ghanaian citizenship? Correct. So, so basically, my dad is... It's funny because I can relate my dad to your dad. So basically, my dad emigrated to Italy in the 80s. And, you know, he's been living there for 30 years. And, uh, yeah, when it got to the time that, you know, to acquire Italian citizenship, of course, because of, you know, the quality of living, he had to decline the Ghanaian citizenship and acquire the Italian one. Now, we live in the UK. Um, so, you know, I would like to go for double citizenship if I could. But this is the case where it's either I would have to decline my Italian one and go for a British one, therefore acquire the Ghanaian one as well. But at the same time, I don't feel... British really I feel more Italian so it's a bit kind of a sticky situation <laughs> it's really in, I mean it's really interesting and obviously it's but I'm wondering if your son I, I'm pretty sure your son could take your parents were you born in, in Italy I was born in Italy yeah okay so I think I think that your son could take your parents um birth certificate right and get a Guinean citizenship right right okay okay yeah I mean that, that it's funny because you answer my second question the second question would have been like could you please explain to me should I want to do that in the future for him like you know what kind of avenue you know do I have yeah to do, I mean you know? obviously it's up to like you guys and what your plans are and if, if yeah. you want that and also he might want an Italian citizenship you know what I mean he because of like <laughs> At that point, I mean, we're not in the EU anymore, so he might rather, you know, I mean, who knows? Yeah, yeah. But I think, um, I do think that it's sad that these countries don't allow dual citizenship. Yeah, I mean, I've done a bit of research and it's just politics, basically, you know. Um, it's funny because that, now that relates to one of the guys was saying, that's another thing, you know, there's been black Italians, right, who, it, it kind of a bit similar with the American situation. I think one of the reasons, you know, kind of the people who have lived in the country that, you know, the, the country that hosts them for a long time don't really like other, you know, let me say like black Africans is because of what they achieved in terms of, in, in the Italian situation, for example, there's loads of black people, honest black people who achieved a lot in their lives. And seeing all these immigrants coming around, just looting, you know, just committing rape and, you know, all that kind of stuff. They kind of don't want to associate themselves to these people. So they're kind of like making a step, you know, send a statement to say, do you know what, we're different, we're not like them. And I feel like that's kind of the situation that happens in America. I mean, black Americans over 400, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, they've achieved a lot. So I, I that, that's just my thinking, you know, seeing these people coming around and kind of do something that kind of like they can't relate to, they, they kind of want to send a message that say like, hey, we, we're different, we're not the same. That's that's what mm -hmm. I think. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because <laughs> as I said, in, it, it, in Italy it's really, really bad. I mean, you know, like kind of like black Italians, you know, talking down on the other black because we want to make sure that, you know, we kind of different, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's how is how is how is Italy? I mean, I know you're not in Italy at the moment, mm -hmm. but did you yeah. enjoy like living in Italy? It's funny because, as I said, I watch your content and, you know, I can relate a lot. And in my case, I can relate a lot to the Achempion family um, and what Anna says all the time. I mean, Italy is really, really racist. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> They're going to tell you to your face, hey, go back to your country, all that kind of stuff. So it's either you, you know, toughen up and, you know, which is sad, you know, you toughen up and, you know, you just get used to it and you know like kind of like don't pay attention to the comments or you'd be forced to leave now i didn't leave because of the racial thing i, I love italy you know i've still got family there and everything 
but yeah, I mean, it's a really, really racist country, and I'm not gonna lie, they they're really, really behind compared to you know the UK, for example, other places. You know, they're, they're really, really behind. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks. Great, great champion for us to leave. At least you're telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Vanessa. You have a nice evening. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Um. Okay. Sankofa. Hi. Are you still around? If not. Oh, hi, hi. Vanessa. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say um, thank you um, for the. Um, the great videos that, that you do. I think you guys are opening up um, a very important conversation. And I think, um, I mean, had it not been social media, I think some of these ignorance would have been very difficult um, to to get um, away with. Mm -hmm. um, talking about what, what um, Kuku was saying, um, I, I, think, I, think, I think people should realize that there is ignorance on both sides. I mean, we in Ghana um, were colonized and the whole colonial project was to make sure that you are inferior to your colonizer. So um, we were made to feel um, that way. And those in America were, were also um, told so many, so many lies. And a few decades ago, I mean, human zoos were very common in, in Europe and America where they, they get people from, from Africa and they build, they build huts and put humans there and, and show to um, people come and see, see um, to see how people lived in Africa. I mean, these things are not very long. I mean, in recent um, history. So all these things have build up and and it, it, it's still there so it, it, it is very easy for people to um to feel um, that way but i think if people genuinely want to come back to africa or ghana or or or, or wherever i think we should make it a bit more easier for them to come because there are people who genuinely want to come and live and and contribute, and there may be be um, others who may not be so much um, committed to 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 doing that. But at the end of the day, um, there are you can't just make a blanket um, statement and say, "Oh, because um, th this person did that or that person is doing that, everyone is the same," and sort of put put everybody in the same um, kind of uh, um, basket. If you take yeah. um, uh, um, Italy, for instance, um, if you are uh, um, Brazilian and you have um, Italian, maybe grandparents, uh, you, you can get citizenship quite easily. So why can't we also make it very easy for, for, for people who have, I mean, connections and, uh, and heritage also make it easy for them to, to acquire citizenship if, if they want to? Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Thanks so much. Um, and hopefully speak to you soon. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a nice Bye. Mufasa. Hi. Are you there? All right. I'll be moving on to King Anan. Hi. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? Hi, how you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Loving that Ghana flag in the background. Yeah, you like that? Woo! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Ghana. Hey, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to meet you virtually. Um, I've been watching your, your channel for like over a year and a half now. And oh, um, nice. your, your first video that I saw was the one with you and your, where you interviewed your sister where she was uh the thumbnail she was i think she was sitting on a on a grass or something like that so yeah. yeah i've been catching all your like almost like all your videos practically since then so you're doing you're doing an amazing job so kudos to you, you you're definitely opening a lot of uh interesting conversations and um yeah you're doing awesome so um yeah i, I just want to jump in on this conversation because this conversation is really layered um as a matter of fact i was actually 
watching. I started watching when Quick was talking. I was actually in the shower. That's how much of a, a YouTube addict I am. <laughs> so that's like me. I watch YouTube in the shower sometimes, and it's like, yeah. I mean, it's. Taking I got. I don't watch. I don't watch TV that much, so I got to save time. I got to get it in whenever I can. <laughs> so that's my TV. <laughs> so so basically, um, you know, what I want to say is that you know, quick. I I disagree with with Kweku, but not just because, not just uh, for the fact that I think he's wrong. Uh, he's neither right or wrong. It's just his opinion. And every man is, you know, completely entitled to their own opinion. But what I would say is that I, I, I'm i I'm a Ghanaian. I, I was born in Ghana and I moved to the United States at the age of 12 to live with my father who'd been, who's been living in America for like 40 years or whatever. Uh, whenever I ask him, he changes the amount of years that he's been living here. So I could never, I could never really tell, but he's been here a pretty long time. And he's he's married to an African-American woman who had lived in Ghana on two different occasions in the 70s and a, a very strong black woman. So that's the type of ho- that's the type of household that I moved into, you know, and just by through the process of assimilation, I learned a lot about black people and their struggle in this country. You know, I, I learned, you know, through the, you know, slavery, the transatlantic slave trade, Jim Crow, civil rights movement. Uh, and, and the funny thing about it is when I lived in Ghana as a child, I didn't know anything about the transatlantic slave trade. I, I never knew that something like that happened. As a matter of fact, where, where I was born in the Western region, you know, I, I'm sure you're probably f- uh, familiar with Second D Top Riding. Mm-hmm. Second D is where I was born. And then I moved to Accra to live with my aunt at the age of four. So we used to go back and forth. Uh, from Accra to Second D, and we would pass by the the slave castles, Elmina and Cape Coast Castle, and I never knew what happened over there. I never knew until I came to America that something like that happened, that that atrocity happened. And I, I say that to make a point that when I moved to America in the '90s, at least at that time, most Black Americans were not really e- educated about Africa. All they, they knew about Africa is what they saw on TV, the little Ethiopian child with flies around, uh, you know, their body, white people going there to actually to save um, Africans, you know, Africa being the dark continent and what National Geographic portrayed in their, in their magazines and, and on TV. That's all people knew about Africa. So I say that to make a point is that on both sides, we're both miseducated about each other. And and that's what that's what's actually separating us is the miseducation. And actually, there's a there's a gentleman by the name of Carter G. Woodson that wrote this book called the Mis- the Miseducation of the Negro. If anybody that's watching this hasn't picked up that book, you you should read it because that book tells a lot about how black people and in, in the black people all over the world, as a matter of fact, have been seriously miseducated, and that's on purpose because the our colonizers and our enslavers want to separate us. They, they wanted to separate us because they know how powerful we are if we're together. And that's what's holding us apart is, is, the, is the separation and the misunderstanding that we've been through for centuries and centuries is, is really, is really that's, that's what's keeping us apart. And, you know, and as, as a matter of fact, I started a, a YouTube channel uh, months ago because that, that's something that I wanted to concentrate on it is the whole purpose and the whole motivation, motivation for that channel is, is to build a bridge between uh, continental Africans and and um, uh, diasporans, and especially uh, specifically African Americans, because that's that's my experience, and that's you know that's I live among Black people in this country. So it's not that Black people here in in America hate uh, Africans. It's just that we don't really understand each other. We're family. Mm. We're family, and, and 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 even people in your country and where you live in Scotland. You know, because I know Ghanaians have been going there for years. I saw, I saw the uh, the interview that you did with your with your dad, and that was that was a really great interview. Because I could I could really em- empathize with that, connect with him, because my my father is kind of like your father. It's, it was almost <laughs> like looking at the same people when you were interviewing him. So yeah. many people said that. And so yeah. many people were like that is just like my dad. Yeah, it's almost like it was almost like talking to my father because they're you know most Ghanaian men are raised raised the same way, so yeah. they have yeah they have like similar mindsets. So 
Yeah, so it's 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 crazy. It's just that this is this is my experience, and you know, I feel that we need to we need to come together. And YouTube is probably the best thing that happened to African American or African diaspora and continental African relations because now you can actually see where we're controlling the narrative. You know, mm -hmm. you, what am I, and a whole bunch of other people, y'all doing a great, excellent job. You know, we're we're controlling the the narrative. Like, look, this is this is the how what our land looks like. This is this is what's happening on the soil. Like you have to come here and see for yourself. Don't rely on what we've been taught for decades and decades about Africa. And you know, this, you know, we we, we live in huts and we live in trees and they're lying and monkeys. Uh, yes, those those parts are in Ghana or in Africa, but we also have a civilized society. We also have skyscrapers. We also have, you know, a functional society. You know, some of our roads are might be bad, but we're a developing country. You know, we're not America. Yeah, you don't go to Ghana to to have the same experience as America. You know, you we're a developing country. We're coming up. We have a lot of potential. We got a long way to go. So. Yeah, and in regard to the Ghanaian citizenship or just going to another country and actually acquiring the citizenship, what I would say, my opinion on that is, do I believe uh, African diasporans, descendants of uh, African diasporans uh, need to have a citizenship? They deserve it, I believe. Yeah, they deserve to, because if you can trace your lineage to another country, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, wherever, yeah, you, you deserve to get a citizenship, but you have to go through the process just like anywhere else. You know, you can't just show up at your uh, at a government office in Ghana and say, I'm here. Give me citizenship. No, it, it doesn't doesn't work like that. So, yeah, that, that's just my piece on the whole thing. Um, you know, Kwaku is not is not wrong. He's not wrong or he's not right. It's just his opinion. But I, I believe it's, all, all this is just based on ignorance. But yeah, anyway, you guys, uh, if you want to check out my YouTube channel, that's that's the name, King Anangana. Uh, you could just type it on YouTube and, you know, just check out some of my content. But Great. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely be subscribing. And yeah, I really appreciate you coming on and everything you said, because I'm so happy that, you know, you've had that, that opinion because we were getting some, you know, slight iffy opinions on the whole thing. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good to, thanks. And also because you've had such an experience with your, like your stepmom being African-American, mm -hmm. um, you know, you obviously have a good understanding of it. Right, yeah, everyone has a has a unique experience. So yeah, uh, so that's, that's that's it. But yeah, thank you. Um, you. You're doing a great job and keep on, keep on doing what you're doing. Kudos. Thanks so much, see you later, bye. That was great. Can't wait to check out King and Anne's channel. Wow, I've been on here for a long time. I feel like I need to stand up. Sometimes when I go on YouTube and I see somebody's been on live for two hours, I'm like, how were they on live for two hours? And here I am, two hours and 17 minutes in, still here. <laughs> um, wow, okay. So I think that it's been such a great live and um, oh, hang on. Sorry, one more person. Mufasa, hi. Hey, what's going on? I'm here. I didn't hit the button fast enough last time, so. Yeah, it's bad. all right. Yeah, sorry. It's fine. How are you? Supreme, Supreme. How you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. Whereabouts are you? Uh, I'm in uh, Palm Springs, California right now. I'm from San Diego, California. I'm, I'm actually a 100% um, Black American, foundational Black American, whatever you want to call it. Mm. You know, my family is from Illinois. And I grew up in San Diego, so I just I just wanted to call in because everybody was talking about us, and I noticed none of us uh, were calling in. Yeah, and, that's uh, what I wanted. I was like trying to say, you know, somebody come because yeah. this is a very one sided conversation. No, but the crazy part I noticed is not a lot of us even here. I, I thought that it was mostly us, but I think your channel is a little different. I don't know. I don't know. No, I, my, my channel is fifty percent American. Yeah. 20% UK and like 10% Ghana or something. Yeah, but it's, it's probably immigrants in America though. Okay, yeah. right. So probably, I'm like, where are we at? <laughs> I don't, you know, it's probably I, like Ghanaians in America. No, cause I watch even, um, I watch Dinah's channel and I used to think it was all Americans. And um, when I start paying attention, it's not, you know. Um, mm. But anyway, I don't know. That's really interesting actually. So yeah, yeah what, what's your opinion on it? Oh, okay. So I heard the guy with the African Americans don't like us thing. Um, he, okay. I think a lot of Africans that come here, um, because African Americans have always had an affinity for Africa and 
there's always that's where the whole pan Africanist idea and thing came from here. But we have a totally different uh, view on blackness than Africans. Most Africans do because of our experience here. Uh, when we were mixed, a bunch of tribes got mixed into one. We came up with this whole idea of you're black. You're not just African, but that's foreign to a lot of places in Africa. So, um, you know, I think we had an affinity for it. And it, like, even if you listen to music, if you go to the 80s hip hop, there's a lot of hip hop songs bigging up Africa. You got the whole Jamaican reggae movement bigging up Africa. We got all this outreach about Africa. And you never really hear that stuff in Africa talking about us. I don't really see it in terms of the music at the time. You had um, Fela Kuti. Um, you had um, you you, de you definitely had some of the leaders who came here and went to school here and spent time here that caught on to that wave. But even when they got there, in like the main like, if you look at a lot of the Pan Africanists that came here, studied, became Pan Africanists, and went back, a lot of them were killed. You understand what I mean? So mm -hmm. is it? the African ethos is not necessarily pan-Africanism. Get what I mean? So yeah. what he's saying when he came back, a lot of um, a lot of Africans, they would come here. We do a thing called clowning or it's a different words like clowning, capping. Uh, it's a different African-Americans got different words, but like we joke on people, you know what I'm saying? And we joke on each other, you know? So like, like there's a popular term you probably heard, African booty scratcher, right? I don't know if you heard of that term. No, I've not heard that one. <laughs> okay, yeah. We if we had time, I would play you a little clip out of a movie. But there's a term called African booty scratcher, and a lot of people are like, oh, I got here. They was calling me an African booty scratcher and, and everything. And um, the thing is, it was more African Americans called African booty scratchers than Africans because we just joke on each other. That's what we do. And it's a lot of places they can understand, and I really look at. They get jokes, and it's like a culture shock, really, because they're getting jokes. And they're thinking like, oh, it's because I'm African or whatever, but that's what we do. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In general, I think we are accepting of that. But the thing is, when I talk to a lot of African-Americans, they'll come and they'll be like, hey, um, uh, they say the Africans don't mess with us. That's what they say, because you'll go around. Africans will come into town. They form like their own part of town and they just do their own thing. And you're thinking, see, in America, because we're oppressed so long, it's African-American culture. I'm from California, right, I, which is a state. I could go to Pennsylvania or another state. And amongst black people, I, I could walk through a bunch of white people, a bunch of Mexicans, Arabs, and everything. But as soon as I see a black man, I'm going to say, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And we're mm -hmm. going to connect to each other. We have a connection. We feel like all black people are connected. Africans aren't thinking that way. Because if you grew up in Africa, all your enemies, all the people who did bad to you, all of that, was other blacks, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know because my dad says hi to every other black person in Scotland. Yeah, it, well, see, he lived in Scotland for a while, so he probably yeah, know. I, to be honest, do you know what? It's probably totally different because actually, there's really not that many black people here. <laughs> Whereas, no, but it's the same thing. That's the same concept, though. Yeah, yeah, but are you saying that Africans wouldn't say hi to other black people that they saw? In a lot of cases, I'm going to tell you, the Africans being here, I'm not going to make it as if it's all completely terrible, right? But it's they're just another group like other groups, right? It's like, it's like the Arabs or it's like anyone else. So you'll go around. There's not necessarily a connection on blackness. But um, like in my experience, see, I'm a Pan-Africanist, you know? So I'll um, go in. When I go to the Ethiopian restaurant, I'm talking to them actively, asking them questions, engaging with them, you know? My daughter's talking to the guy or how many African countries she can name. So when you engage with them, um, I get positive responses. But that that goes for anyone. But we're thinking like, oh, we're all Africans. We all brothers, right? We brothers and sisters and Africans ain't you're not getting that energy from Africans. So they're just kind of doing their own thing. And we doing ours. You get what I mean? And to us. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I do think, though, that um, I totally like I hear what you're saying. I guess just for me, first of all, my dad says hi to every black person regardless of where they're from. Um, but then the other thing is maybe those same people have had a bad experience and so they've shut off. You know, like the people, let's say, in the Ethiopian restaurant, maybe they've had a bad experience and they just feel like, oh, do you know what? I feel like I've been treated a certain way, so now I'm just going to stick to my, like, mm -hmm. family. You know what I mean? Like... 
Um, yeah. So it's, it's really difficult. But then again, I guess it's the whole like culture thing. Um, I know um, Africans from different countries in Scotland, so Gambians, for example, and a lot of them are friends with a lot of other Gambians. And I guess it's because the culture is totally different, you know, like in Gambia. Yeah. Um, and so they want to like connect with their culture in an, in another place and potentially like cook food for each other that's the same food that they eat at home. Uh, so I think it is it is totally like it's such a difficult one because somebody's is moving from somewhere completely different into a different place where yeah I guess the thing is that the mentalities are totally different. Yeah, I mean the cultures are different. I could get that, you know, like because when I repatriate, it's a, I'm I'm very proud of my uh, not America in the country, but my Black American history as us as the ethnic group of people. Uh, we do things a little different, you know. I don't know if they listening to Al Green at the barbecue in Ghana. I don't know how they do it, but we do it how we do it, you know. And um, mm. so, so I guess that's a good question then. When you go to, if you ever repatriated to an African country. Mm -hmm. Would you like seek out um, Americans or like, you know, people that have lived in America? Yeah, I, I think I would. But see, but this is the difference, though. This is the difference. This is the difference. Right. So when I went um, when I went to I've been to Africa a couple of times, I actually have been to Ghana also. Um, when I go to Ghana, I'm there uh, with the people interacting. Um, I'm in Nigeria. That's actually in that photo right there. That's my Nigerian brother right there. Uh, I oh, did. Nice. Yeah, that's us actually in Volta in Ghana. Uh, he took me up there. When we did some stuff up there, but I'm there interacting with the the people, um, learning about the cultures, um, you know, like learning how to speak a little bit of Yoruba, learning mm -hmm. these things, you know, with, with the chiefs, with the kings, etc. Um, and how would you feel if I just came there, like the guy? Oh, the white people treat us better, and all of this stuff. If I came to an African country where we come as a group, and then we just form our own little section over here. And then we just deal with the politicians and the elites and stuff like that, which, you know, is the form of the whites in America. And then we just don't talk to you. And when you come around and just kind of like whatever, uh, you know, it, it, it creates this thing. It's like, damn, you're going to come over here. You're going to get friendly with these white people who have done all of this stuff to us. And then they put you on TV. You're going around. Go ahead. No, but do you know what I would say is that the same um like let's say hatred for white people right, that is in i'm not saying everyone hates what i mean i'm not saying that but that the the white supremacy and everything that everybody has faced in you know in the uk and in america of course like there was colonization in it, i think is i don't want to get too deep into this but of course there was colonization um in ghana but like i like ghanaians that i know in ghana like they don't hate white people and I'm not saying that um you know they should or anything but it's they don't have the same perception of white people basically in my opinion than black people in the UK that, that have experienced racism basically because they've not experienced that racism. Yeah I agree with you. I in uh, in a I agree with you for one um and for two because there's a this is the thing um and this is another issue that's kind of going on in the Americas. There's a lot of people like you know there's no like exact term for a black American whose parents come from the South or the slavery, you know, and they're now they're creating these terms. But you'll have people, they'll have these immigrant parents. Like there was a guy on here earlier that came after the Kwaku guy and you were asking him, like, hey, where are you from? Oh, uh, I'm in Canada. Where are you from? Oh, uh, I'm, my parents from America or something. He didn't want to just say, like, I'm Ghanaian, which is what you were trying to ask him, in my opinion, you know, mm -hmm. and people can blend in. And they have different experiences. And you have people like uh, Barack Obama. Barack Obama is not a black American. He's a he has a white parent and then he has a Ghanaian or uh, um, a Kenyan father somewhere. Now, to us, that's black. You see, we voted for him. We didn't when when that happened. Did you see black Americans doing anything? We came out and we supported him bigger than anybody ever has done. Nobody was like, you ain't black. We didn't do that. If you if you go back and look at things in 2008, Black Americans didn't do that. We said he's he, even though he's half black, not even from America. We said that's our that's our black brother. And we voted for him because that's how we are. Right. But um, uh, sometimes you have people now you got the Obama thing. You got this Kamala Harris thing where she has a Jamaican parent and an Indian parent. And you go and you look at her page. She's celebrating things in India. Don't really sell her, see her celebrating things in Jamaica. And you have people who are immigrants 
um, that might be part something, but they don't share our particular experience. And then they can speak on our behalf as a quote unquote black person. You get what I mean? So now you have people who they have all this love and affinity for America because from their perspective, if I had it bad in Nigeria, uh, the government's against me, my family's not having opportunities, and then America gives me an opportunity, I'm going to think favorable about America. I don't have time to be going too back into the history where an African-American is going to be looking at it like, look, you're kissing up to white people who are the reason that your country is in the position it's in. You just can't see it because you're not knowing the history. You're not looking that far. That's how we're looking at it. Mm -hmm. So it's an issue, though, because it's like, OK, so now you're over here and you're like, oh, yeah, uh, what's the problem? I don't see the issue. America's great. When I was in my country, this, this and that. And it's like, dude, you don't know what we had to go through yeah, yeah, and yeah. what your ancestors, what your ancestors had to go through. See, the, the transatlantic slave trade, people think they need to know the transatlantic slave trade because they need to know black American in the diaspora's history. The transatlantic slave trade, or I call it the European slave trade, was the worst thing that happened to Africa. You lost all your human capital. Everybody that would have studied other things picked up and became a slave trader because there was no capital around and that was the easiest way to get money. So you had an entire continent pretty much disrupted for years where they could have had comfortability, they could have studied, they could have did all these things. They It was all set back for this focus on this attack in that ruined Africa, right? And then it put you in this weak state to be colonized over until just the 60s. So it was not just about, oh, black Americans, learn it so you can understand our pain. If you didn't give a damn about African-Americans, you need to know that history, especially if you live in Ghana or West Africa. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, no, definitely. And and as the last co the last guy was saying is that he wasn't taught that in, in Ghana until, you know, even until he came to America, he wasn't taught about the, um, the transatlantic slave trade, which I think I didn't know that, you know, it wasn't in the curriculum there, but that needs to change. Yeah, no, it, it, it wasn't. It, it, a lot of people don't know about it, you know. And like I said, I mean, you know, if people don't know, they just don't know. But the point is, the per, you got to look at the perception that this gives off, right? So we talk to Africans, they don't know about this stuff. Like, uh, I'll give you a, another example. So uh, there was, you have the year of return in Ghana, right? They're like, yeah, mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters come home, this and that. And then when you get there, uh, it's trouble getting citizenship. A lot of people are telling us, you know, you can't really get that. That's not a part of it. But bringing your tourism dollars is a part of it. So it, you know, it, it gives off this vibe. It's like, OK, you can bring your tourism money, but you can't really stay in freehold land and things like that. So I'm like and then when and then they said, no, 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 you can do it. You, you can. There's a process to become a citizen and everything. Right. But the process is identical to a, a white person or an Arab person or a British anybody, you know. So it, it's like, what is the how is that? Uh, brotherhood uh, outreach, or is that just a tourism, um, you know, marketing plan? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, um, I think that, uh, do you know what? I do think that the year of return was a great thing, but I do think that it should have been backed by easy way to gain citizenship, because otherwise it's like, it doesn't exactly make sense. In my opinion. Um, but as we spoke about earlier, you know, governments are money driven, it seems. Right. Unfortunately. Uh, so a lot of people are adding me in the chat. I guess I can't answer all the questions, but somebody says something about my name. This is not my name. <laughs> my name, my name is Tori. I'll have a Yoruba name soon, but that Mufasa Shabazz is just a, that's not even a name. Oh okay. yeah, that's not nothing real. My name is Tori. Yeah, I I can't keep up really with the chat on the side, but I appreciate everyone's engagement. But yeah. Um, no one taught me. Okay, well, yeah, thanks so much. Um, people were loving what you were saying. I saw that. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, thanks for, for watching my channel. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Oh yeah, no, and, and as a, from a videographer to another one, um, that's what I like about your channel is the, uh, the production quality that a lot of our, a lot of people in our space don't take it seriously. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a good thing and I, I know as somebody who does it, I know that like you don't slap those videos together in 10 minutes. Those types no. of videos. Yeah. That's hours of work. So hours of work and um thousands of dollars in investment into equipment. So, you know, when when you're watching somebody and they care about their audience, that's something that should be considered, you know. 
and yeah. it's a standard, you know, you're raising the standard. So I appreciate you for that. Thanks. No, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I think, obviously, you know, if you don't know anything about it, you don't know. But yeah, like cameras and gear. And I really care. Like, I really want the stuff to look good. And it's going to go up another level. Um, because I've got like great things planned. So I can't wait for you to see. And yeah, thanks so much for that. And you later. Thanks for Bye. having me on. Wow. Um, that was really interesting. Um, I actually love to hear other people's opinions on things. Um, it would be good if somebody had their camera on, actually. Uh, Tori, somebody was asking if you've got a channel. Okay, now let me go to the next person. Hi, Kwesi. Yeah, hi, Vanessa. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How are you? Yeah, I just wanted to say you guys have done well showing the positive parts of Africa in the media. So a lot of Africans, because I'm here in the UK, a lot of Africans have been inspired, especially the younger generation, because if you know anything about the UK is that growing up in the UK as an African was very hard. You know, the teasing, the bullying, because of how the media depicts the continent. So I think the Africa to the world movement and how you guys have portrayed Africa has been very, very, very good. And the second point I just wanted to make before I come off is... Um, the whole um, year of return. Um, the, the Ghanaian government believes, first and foremost, they believe in Ghana for Ghanaians only. So the Ghanaian, you said the Ghanaian government Do they? didn't come again. Do they? Because then why would they have done that, though? That is the reason why they are not giving citizenship to anybody with the year of return. Okay. They believe in Ghana for Ghanaians only. And the reason why is because there was another West African country that had a year of return. I don't know if you've heard of Liberia, and it was a complete disaster. Because of I that... I didn't know they did one. Yeah, Liberia did have a year of return. Over a century ago, or well, some time ago. What I will say is, the Ghana government believes in Ghana for Ghanaians only. That is the reason why citizenship is not being dished to anybody, because you don't want to give citizenship just to anybody. It has to be earned. They have to be in a country for some time, work hard, pay taxes, have no criminal record, and they have to earn the citizenship because we Ghanaians have built Ghana to what it is now. That's why I, I'm here to talk about Ghana for Ghanaians only. Oh, were you the one saying that in the comments? Yes, Ghana for Ghanaians only. No, that but hang you. on, hang on. But why do you, like, why? Like, what? what's your issue with, with other people coming in? Because me, for example, obviously I'm Ghanaian, but I'm also Scottish. No, no, oh, I'm not wait, talking about you. I'm, mean, I'm, not, I'm not talking about you. I'm mainly talking about other people who aren't Ghanaians, who don't have a Ghanaian parent coming in through coming in under the banner of the year of return. Okay. The Ghanaian government believes in Ghana for Ghanaians only. That is why they said they're not going to give citizenship to anybody. And I, I personally believe Ghana should be for Ghanaians only for a number of reasons why we Ghanaians have built up Ghana to what it is now. A lot of the diaspora, when we came in contact with them in the UK and America, denied us. They didn't, they didn't even want to embrace Africa. They told us to our face, they are not Africans. I'm talking about the diaspora, the central slaves here in the UK. <clears throat> I, think, I think the thing about this and what I've realised from this conversation is that like, people with their own trauma. So, like, you, I'm guessing, were bullied, you know, um, for being African, as were like a lot of people in, here in the UK. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you're coming now with like your, um, yeah, you know, it's like, like the way you've been treated. Be, yeah, because the same people are now turning up in Ghana saying, "Hey, guys, it's the year of return." Like th that's almost yeah. insulting to Afro Ghanians. In, a lot of Ghanians in the UK feel like full insulted. They yeah, feel, like hard on, like a couple. Yeah, they feel hard done on. Yeah, no, I, I, I see where you're, I do see where you're coming from, but I do think that we have to like, you know, like move past, obviously, you know, you, you're, you're actually welcome to your, your opinion, but yeah, thanks very much. And I'm going to move on. Um, but yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Ghana for Ghanaians only. That's your opinion. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
Kwesi, who I had to um as a troll for real. Do you know what though? Like I wouldn't say he's a complete troll because that's his opinion. And he wasn't like being so trolly, you know, it's just like his opinion on this situation. But it was just, it's an interesting opinion to have. Hi, brown coat blue. That's okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, great. So um, you know, the the on before me, um kind of on the victim to a lot of the the, con the connection, the connection is quite not great. Okay, maybe if you can get your connection right, and then we can bring you back in. Hi, JB Messenger. Yeah, guys, I don't know if the connection is bad on my side. No, your connection is oh, good. Keep side. I'm online. Yeah, it's okay. How are you guys? Um, yeah, good, thanks. How are you? You're right. I'm doing well. I'm just watching from uh, Uganda. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving people coming in from all these different countries. <laughs> yeah, two weeks back I was watching when I was in Somalia. Also, three weeks I was watching when I was in Ethiopia. But now I'm in Uganda. Oh, cool. So, so do you travel around Africa for fun or for work? Yeah, I also travel when I'm doing my work, but I also uh, upload some videos of where I go. So currently oh, cool. I'm in Uganda. I'm your follower since, uh, I think since you came to Odomaya, because I got you from Odomaya a long time. Oh, nice. Oh, so thanks, friend. I've been just behind watch, watching your work. Thank you so much for the great work you're doing. And I also appreciate your viewers for following you. And I also request you guys to do the same, to follow me on my YouTube channel as we try to expose Africa. Uh, right now, I'm also on duty working on the projects after election uh, on 14 this month. So I'm going to release more projects of Uganda. Guys, I'm, I'm just here to greet you and request you to support me by subscribing to my channel. I'll also be family to you. Great, thanks so much. And yeah, I mean, it's great to see all different countries. So you should check out JB yeah. Messenger's channel. See you later. I'll send my link there and give to those guys and they follow me. Thank you so much. Have a nice time. Uh, I'll plug for his channel, but you know, that's fine. <laughs> right. Um, great dialogue. My afternoon is running out. Yeah, my back is like, just about to like i don't know what's gonna happen if i keep sitting here any longer i'm gonna like go to three hours i've got 15 minutes more three hours sitting in the seat it's a long time okay right hi how are you again hey i'm doing good how about you can you hear me now yeah yeah that's a better connection okay yeah i switched off the mobile connection um but i just wanted to say the it's important to to realize that a big part of America is how it markets itself. So people around the world are gonna see the uh, high rises, the mansions, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure, things like that. And they're not gonna see, uh, or I'm sorry, and they are gonna uh, see with regards to Africa, only the, you know, the children in Ethiopia with the fly crawling around on the eyeball and things like that. So it's, it's important to realize that that's by design. And the, the people that uh, move uh, from, you know, different parts of the world to the United States, not only from Africa, but from different, you know, different continents, they also see that stuff when they arrive in the United States. And that just kind of reinforces um, the anti-black, um, you know, mindset that is in America. Um, so it's, it's important to, to understand that that's uh, by design. Um, Africans that come to the United States don't really get to meet a lot of, um, you know, your quote unquote African Americans, because they're, uh, a lot of the places that they're going to, they're going for, you know, work visa, maybe they got, um, 
you know, they're trying to start a business or something like that. They're not moving to the South. They're not moving to anywhere where there's a suburb. Um, they're moving to a major metropolitan area, usually a city. And in cities in the United States, like, you know, Chicago or, you know, Washington, D.C. or uh, Minneapolis, anything like that, those cities are actually designed. Um, even the, the civil engineering of the cities is designed to keep black people in, in very small areas. So like uh, uh, tollway exits on roads, highway exits on roads, they will actually go around those areas in the, in the design and planning of the city um, so that people can you know, literally drive around the areas that you know, the, the black people live. So when, when people come from Africa or other places uh, for work in those big cities, they are staying in those areas, but they're making their own little microcosm as well. Um, so they, like my wife um, had to deal with, somebody had mentioned the, the African booty scratcher thing that came from a movie uh, when, when her family came to the United States um, from Jamaica, they actually had to deal with, you know, as kids, you know, other kids making fun of them and, and calling them that and things, things of that nature. Um, but it's because they're they're not going to uh, the, the south. They're not going to rural, um, you know, parts of the country where there's a lot of black people. They're not going to where there's black suburbs. They're not going to anything like that. So they have a very limited um, um, access to, you know, African Americans, and um, so they're seeing in places basically where the. Uh, you know, the governments have made it very difficult for, for African Americans to thrive. So they're, they're living in places where there might be um, projects or something like that, you know, in, in that area. Um, no schools, um, you know, schools that have been completely defunded intentionally. Um, so they're, they're seeing these places, excuse me, and that for them is validating what they had seen uh, you know, on TV, that if they come to America, that all these wonderful things are here, but um, but that there's also a problem with, you know, uh, black people in America, and that they should then disassociate themselves from those people um, if they want to quote unquote make it in America. Um, so that kind of it's 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 all used as a wedge, um, in my opinion, by design uh, to 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 just kind of uh, weaken. Uh, the, the connection that, that black people have in America. It's um, it's useful now that we have YouTube and what you're doing and, and other YouTubers doing because um, basically in the past, the only thing that you could see was that Ethiopian starving kid, somebody earlier had said the Sarah McLaughlin music playing, the violins playing, whatever else is going on. And, um, you know, it's now that we can see what's actually going on in Africa, people are interested in, in the, um, you know, in people from the continent. So mm -hmm. that's all I wanted to say. Great. Thanks. Great. Thanks. got to so see much. through that stuff. Thanks. Thanks. Very much. Very much. Yeah. Bye. Um, no, that was, that was great chat there. And hi to me. Oh, I'm live. I didn't know that. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, hello. Um, I've been following your channel for a while now. It's quite a nice and informative channel. I'm from Nigeria. I actually grew up in Nigeria before I moved to the UK when I was 18. And so I may not know exactly how it applies in an American context, but I just want to say, for example, like when you see Diaspora Wars, a lot of it comes down to culture shock because... Um, there's some things that are like carry over, right? So I feel like if I look at when I'm online, I look at some African um African American chats. I do see I see some similarities, but I also see some differences. Especially I'll give you an example, right? So in Nigeria we have so many tribes. I'm Yoruba. Uh I have cousins that are Igbo, cousins that are Edo. Um my mom is Igbo and sorry, my mom is Edo and my dad is Yoruba. So I'm kind of like I have access to both cultures. Now, if I'm, I'm also from the south of Nigeria. 
the culture generally in the south it once you go up north it changes it's more of a sahelian kind of culture and so there's this kind of culture shock that if you are predominantly from the south right and uh, maybe like you have someone else from the north it's not the same right there are some certain expect expectations that people tend to have that you just won't you just won't feel and also that's just an example of a culture shock right so yeah. the pro part of the problem we're actually having is first off once i i moved here when i was like 18 i didn't go to school i just basically started working then i went to university it doesn't give you the exact same kind of experience that you get say for example if i moved here when i was like 15 or 12 for example because i'm not really I'm not really into the culture of, of Black Brits, for example. I think that's really where a lot of these issues come up. And going back home in Nigeria, obviously, like you said, I mean, we were taught about it, but like, for example, the history was removed from our curriculum in like 2012 or so, or something like that. So we do know some bit, but it doesn't go into detail. And if I'm in Nigeria, <laughs> And someone I can look at, oh, this is how it's working in Nigeria and everything. There's a kind of disconnect that I would have that I won't, it just doesn't work that way. And I think part of the problem also comes in when you see Africans in Africa, anyways, that are quite antagonistic. And there's this human tendency to focus on the negative instead of the positive. So, and social media also amplifies that, which is what I think is part of where our problem lies. Hmm. Okay. Um. So, how, are you enjoying your time in the UK? Have you? How, how long have you? I mean, I can't tell what age you are. How I am twenty-one. All oh, right. Okay. So it's been a few <laughs> years now. Do you like it? Yeah. I'll say it's quite an interesting experience. I don't have the problem because I moved with my family. So even it's kind of like my mom, my dad, my brother. We all moved together. So I didn't really have the problem of, oh, I'm quite lonely because mm. I always had my family with me. Okay. Oh, well, that's nice then. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think definitely when you when you travel with your family, then it's a com maybe different from if you were traveling on your own. Um, yeah. Nice. I see Wode Maya's in the comment section. Feel free to join, Wode, if you're free. Mm. Um, all right, cool. Thanks so much, Timmy. And bye. Bye. Rocky. Hey, hi, hi Vanessa. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. So I, I actually uh, started following you when you did the signature apartment. I actually commented on your video because I bought, I bought uh, one of the studio apartments. Oh, and then, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So basically what everybody is saying is true. Like, I agree from what Kweku said to what uh, uh, Musafa said to uh, the, the, the last guy before this one. Now, again, it's all based on individual experiences, you know, like, and like the guy before this one said, if you come to America and then you live in the South is totally different from if you grew up in like New York or uh, Chicago and all those big areas. Like I grew up in New York, Bronx, New York to be specific. And it's, it's just very hard because like with all the stereotypes that you go through, but then again, I didn't make it like, you know, a general experience. Because because of the nature of my job, my experiences going to the Midwest was different. My experiences going to the South was different. So it's basically who you encounter during your experiences. Now, again, Kweku said um, some most uh, African Americans are limited to uh, where they like. Hey, hi, Wadi, how you doing? Other then? Hi, Wadi. <laughs> Ha. Yeah, so um I don't have a good name today. What one of the guys said most African Americans are, you know, uh limited to where they grew up and they don't move around to another city. It's true, and it's true for all um, most most Americans. It's true for most Americans. They don't travel to wherever. But but then 
what hurts me was when Kweku said, oh, like, even whites treat me better than, you know, African Americans. I was hurt with that statement because the thing I've experienced is like African Americans are very straightforward. They will tell you when they don't like you and they will tell you when they like you. Most white folks will be laughing with you, but they really, you know, mm -hmm. are not with you. You know, they're, they're not yeah, straightforward. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what- You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was really hurt with that statement. And the thing is like, it's also true that, you know, because of colonization and, you know, our experiences in Africa and their experiences here has made us, you know, kind of separate and we don't understand each other. Yeah. So somebody's experience, and, and, and it's also true that most Africans that immigrate here don't travel to other states, just like I was saying. So they are not able to experience different um, African-Americans how because African-Americans are not the same. They are different in the South. They are different in the Midwest. They are different in wherever you meet them. So mm -hmm. somebody's experience in like the Bronx, just like mine, which was a very bad one, is totally different when, you know, my, my job transferred me to the South, when I went to school in the Midwest, it's totally different. So when people generalize stuff, it's very, it's very bad. And mm. when people go to the stand of like, white people treat me better than African Americans, that's really somebody who really is kind of lost, you know? And so that was really very unfortunate. You know, mm. so yeah, yeah, that's 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 my experience. But like I said, my experience is a, a, a like I, I wouldn't generalize my experience. Matter of fact, like my my currently where I'm at working at, uh, the people in my section one is from Haiti, which is like the Caribbean experience, and then one is like foundational African American. So and I'm from I'm from Ghana, you know. So it's like I have a Caribbean. I have a African American and me from Ghana, and we work in the same section. And we we openly talk about this kind of stuff. Like we share our experiences. I share my experiences when I when I first came to the states and how I was treated. And like you know, we laugh about it. Like my my friend from from Haiti, Haiti also like this this same thing they're talking about. Like Africans go through, Haitians also go through that. Mm. In fact, people from uh, India. Well, that's pretty much the nature of America. Like, you can be bullied, you know, mm. your accent, like, the way you talk and everything. But then when people go about generalizing things, that's when it kind of divides us, you know? Yeah, no, I, like, really great comments there. A lot of people were really uh, agreeing with what you said in the comments. Thank you, <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, Wadi, send a message on Instagram. Ne outside. Didn't respond. Ah, send it again. Send it again. Send it again. I will definitely respond. Yeah, yeah. I am from. I am from my yaka yaka. Some of this stuff. Keeping it in English, but thanks, guys. It's because you gotta learn. Uh, Fanti or our can. Yes, I. You gotta learn it. Yeah, I know. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Rocky. Hi, Woody. How are you doing? Better How are you doing? Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year. Yeah, I was, oh, was going to Yeah, you came to Ghana without seeing me. Hmm, it's all right. I mean... <laughs> Excuse uh, me. I told you to come <laughs> to Morgan Pit uh, and meet the kids, and you didn't arrive, so... No, no, no. I, I, I'm going to come around next time. You know, I had to go to Kumasi to fix certain things, so that's why I left. I'm so sorry, but I will definitely link up when you come back next time. Thanks. How is everything going? How's Nigeria? Everything is going on well. Nigeria is fantastic. I'm so glad that I came here. Uh, I'm having a good time. Actually, I was supposed to stay here for two days, but uh, they didn't want me to leave. So I ended up extending my days. So like I've been here for like the past 10 days. I actually wow. spent my new year in Nigeria. You know that. What did yeah. you do? On your, nothing. Like, nothing. Um... Nothing. Literally, I was at a wedding on the 31st of um, December because my friend was getting married. That's one of the mm -hmm. reasons why I came to Nigeria. My friend was getting married. So I had to be there, you know, in case if I get married anytime soon, he'll also be at my wedding. So <laughs> <laughs> to make sure the guests are coming. 
exactly exactly so i had to go for the wedding and um after the wedding i decided to create a few content and trust me i'm just i think i'm gonna stay in nigeria for like more than a month the way oh, things wow. are going yeah. I, was meant, I was also meant to come to nigeria this month um but it depends like there's all these regulations did you have to get a covid test before you went to nigeria so i i got a covid test in ghana but when I, I arrived in here, so let me tell you something. Um, something funny really happened. When we were at the airport in Ghana, they told us that we need to pay for the COVID test before we get to Nigeria. But we decided not to pay, right? And then we go to Abuja, and we found out that actually no COVID test exists in here. You, you don't have to do a COVID test. So if we paid in Ghana before getting here, our mm -hmm. money would have lost your money. Can you hear me? Yeah, you would have just yeah. lost your money. Exactly. So we decided to pay on arrival, but we got here. There was nothing like pay for COVID test or anything. And I've been here like 10 days just living my life, man. I don't know in, like about Lagos, but Abuja, this is how it is. It's not by force. Oh, amazing. Yeah. People are saying true Maya wedding. People want you in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. True Maya wedding coming soon, 2022. <laughs> 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 i'll be waiting for my invitation thank you very much look it's gonna be a, a youtube wedding it's gonna be like uh all of us i don't know the destination where we're gonna have the wedding but definitely it's gonna be at the resort and uh, i'll do the behind the scenes i can have an exclusive on the behind the scenes of the wedding on my channel thank you <laughs> have you I, mean, I, I would love to see all vloggers vlogging on my wedding day man that that would be a special one um what's the longest you've done alive what what's the longest you've done alive oh i think during the COVID, i think three hours yeah three, this is three, hours. this has been three hours long like you my have, oh my goodness you've been here for three hours oh wow <laughs> are you not tired you know my like hurts. oh my goodness like sometimes when you talk to people the conversation becomes more interesting and you don't want to get out. That's yeah, no, thing. exactly. I couldn't, I couldn't, it was too juicy. But yeah. um, what's your, what's your 2021 goals, Wode? What? What's your goals, your 2021 goals? Uh, 2021 goals, uh, definitely want to reach a million. Um, so if you know you are here, and you have not subscribed to my channel, please go and subscribe to my channel right now. I need to hit a million this year. And also, like, this year, what I want to do is to uh, meet African president. I want to have one-on-one -on -one with African president. Um, it's something that we're trying to do in terms of, like, it, I'm not the one who's going to ask the questions. I'm just going to throw to the audience. So if an African president agrees mm -hmm. to meet me, I'm going to tell, okay, my audience, like, what well, if you had a chance to ask this president a question, what would that be? So it's going to be, mm -hmm. like, uh, representing my audience in front of African leaders. So that is what I'm working on. So far, so good. We've got one. I'm not going to mention the name right now. But um, very soon, you're going to see it. Very soon. I mean, uh, that's, take, uh, that's such yeah. a good idea. I was thinking yeah. you, could, you could even have, an like, a real audience. You could get your subscribers to come and do it in like a studio and have a real audience like a, a studio in the yeah yeah so have I mean, a real audience in real life oh yeah but that, 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 that can be a go for that can be a go for 2021 because you know like i said I, I'm, I'm supposed to finish uh, all the countries in africa and as soon as i'm done with that that will be the next thing so we're actually building a studio in accra um we're building a studio in accra for that I, I, Vanessa, you, you just exposed oh, me. Right no, I'm, I was. I, <laughs> I, 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 just exposed me right now. I want to build a studio in Accra. I literally just wrote that I want to build a studio in Accra, and if you're building yeah. a studio in Accra, yeah. He just exposed me. He just exposed me. But we're gonna we're gonna do that. So basically, for me, the YouTube channel, like I said, it's for everyone, and I want to build a channel where people can actually report positive styles about Africa from their various countries. So maybe once I get like, I mean, travel all African countries, I think I'm going to stay behind and just do my own thing behind the scene and see people take over my YouTube channel, do their thing on the channel. So that's why I'm so focused on trying to build a channel for now. Yeah, really want to build it. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm excited to see it get to a million. I'm, I, what can be my end of your goal? For my channel maybe two hundred and fifty thousand. 
No, oh, Vanessa, aim higher. You know, you need to like just say 500k. They just say 500k. I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, 500. 500. 90, is it 90 already? I'm at 90,000, yeah, but I need to get to 100,000 like next month. So this week, you have to be, uh, this month, you have to reach 100k this yeah. month. Okay, yeah, this month. Actually, that's a good, a good goal. I'll go for that. Yeah. Be... You have to set um, unrealistic goals and then push it on your subscribers, and definitely they're going to help you out. Like I'm in Nigeria right now, and all I'm gonna say is that let me help me reach 700k. Even though I know that it's not a realistic goal, but I have to say it, you know. And um, you work towards it gradually. You're definitely gonna get there. So mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly. Uh, if anyone on this live right now sent sent my video to ten people and asked them to subscribe, then that's it. we'd be well away. So that's it. That's we could it. do that. Please, you have right. to support Vanessa Kambi. You have to share her videos. I mean, let other people get to know her. She's doing amazing, telling the uh, positive African story. I know we were not friends before, but uh, now we're more like um, best buddies, you know, because we have one common goal. So, hey, I mean, if you need to channel, if you're watching this video because of what am I, please, please do me a favor. I mean, subscribe and be part of this family. Vanessa Kambi. I need to go reply comments on my videos. Yeah, it's good catching you. I've been here and um, yeah, I'll call you after the call. Okay, cool. Bye, Will Day. Yeah. See you later. Have a nice day. Okay. Bye. All right. Thanks so much, guys, for watching this video. I see there's some people trying to get in the live, but I've been here for three hours and five minutes and I need to get editing tomorrow's upload. Um, thank you so, so much for sticking around if you've been here for the whole three hours. Wow amazing and um, as we said the goal for the year is 500,000 but before that I want to hit 100,000 by the end of January so we've got like three weeks to hit 100,000 and um, yeah thanks so much guys my back is just like what are you doing sitting in the same place and <laughs> um, thanks so much see you later bye